Hello there everyone, welcome back to Tano, the last days, that some might say, of this continent of Europe. But hope you guys are having a pretty good day right now. Where are we going back in time? And going to take out Italy. Or the Italian Empire properly. And I've gone ahead and disabled the mad mechanic, as many, 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 many of y'all have said. So I'm like, okay, so be it, I'll do it. Just because I've tried this like four or five, six times off screen. And every time I failed, but actually one time I did capitulate them, but they still launched nukes before they died, so. Um, it's possible. If I literally had one more day, like, we have two days before when we get the little uh, event thingy saying that, oh, they, they're going to launch nukes if you don't do anything. If I had, like, literally one more day instead of two, three days instead of two, I could we could take them out. I promise you. I promise you that. I guarantee you I could take them out. We just had one more day, but we don't, so. It is what it is. We've got some more comms to go through, but we're already... And as you can see, we're doing all this stuff over here as well. Uh, we got a couple times to just to take him out. I still like, at least for now, we're just going to keep on the military mechanic and war timer. So far, we don't need to disable it, but we're going to go straight to war with these guys anyways. So as you can see, we've got our ships in the Mediterranean. Our guys are doing okay. And, 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 and maybe just in case. Maybe ju just, just in case. Just in case. we got some planes here, right? Maybe we should deploy some. And, like, cover our bases and stuff. Duplicate it again, and then you guys do the best going over to Tarania, and then... Duplicate those two again, and then just go down here and do like this here. Just, 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 you know, in case. You never know what might, might happen down here, so. Um, but yeah, we got some comments to go through. I mean, like, the first comment really is just, so many of you guys told me to disable MAD. So, a mutually sure destruction. So yeah, I did. Which is probably a good thing to do. So when we do good war, I'm just going to force the attack. I'll be honest, we're just going to force the attack. I don't care what happens. There we go. Here we go, boys and girls. Over the Alps. So if you'd like to read about this one focus again, please go right ahead. But securing loyalty. Which I think I read before, but I could be wrong. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. And also call in all of our big old allies and kill off everybody else, please. That'd be very, very nice. Can we go to war with Croatia, too? Oh, that'd be so good. Uh, do we call everyone else in for that war as well? Hopefully. Um, yeah, not bad. Alright, so we did force the attack. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we don't lose a lot of guys. I've abandoned the line. I just wanted our transport helicopters to move into there. Which, um, you know, that's why I kind of disabled MAD. Because of your suggestions, as well as the game cheating or bugging out. Oh, hello. Oh, that's not good. Um, are these guys still deploying? No, but they have so many planes in the air. Holy crap. Um, wow. I thought I deployed enough planes here, but apparently not. There you go. Good luck. Makes it for, like, you two. Hang out first, just because we only have a thousand planes here we can actually use. Whoa, what's going on down here? Um, find them and kill them, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anything else? Anything else? Not really. Not too much, no. Uh, that's why I wanted to force the attack. Uh, over here is really bad because they have level 10 forts, which sucks. Since it's over river and into mountains or something like that. Or, yeah, forest, which sucks, but, you know, it's, it, it's okay. It, it, it'll happen. It'll be good. Tank, I'll take action. Kill off those Italian... Well, we literally killed off those Italian tanks. Nice. Very nice. Now, yeah, for, so, soft attacks 365. Uh, modified to 35% because of a river crossing. They've got forts. It's really bad over there. But with them being out of supply, I don't think they'll be able to hold up for very long, which is very good. Oh boy, what's happening here? We sunk a convoy. That's pretty nice. That's, that's pretty nice. Uh, another comment from yesterday was saying that you know, this area here, Burgundy, is basically the Switzerland of TNO right now. They're just kind of hanging out, even though technically uh, Switzerland's already dead, but hey, whatever. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Go cool, keep going. Oh, actually, you know, since we're here, I almost forgot about it. Let's just use our cryptology too. Why not? Hello. Thank you. Come again. Nice. Right? Might as well have it. Or use it since we got it, right? Ah, uh, we don't have that a lot of fuel, do we? Oh boy, this is not looking good. Um, holy cruddy daddies. I'd love to see, like, how much fuel Italy has. Especially since we're raiding them so hard. Here, look at all this stuff. All of our ships are down here. We, we still need a bigger navy. Don't, don't get me wrong. We, we definitely gotta get a bigger navy. Oh, we also destroyed it, but just a destroyer, right? But then we were very excited when we lose, or we sunk, sink enemy destroyers. Oh, well, that's some frigates too, so. Not bad. Um, I don't like losing that heavy cruiser, but it was like an early heavy cruiser, so it could have been a lot worse. Could have been so much. Oh, we actually landed. Yay, we landed. Take the raider so they don't have that. Because I don't want them to have anything. I want them to be poor. I want them to literally be poor. Poor and dumb. That's why I want them to be Italians. I love it, dumb and poor Italians. Hmm. Anyways. And right now we're going to go for some heals. Thank you very much. Or the heal. Very good, very good, very good. As they're spreading out, hopefully that can't Oh, look at this, yes. Oh, wait. What? Hello. Wait, why do we have an encirclement penalty? 
I guess technically we are, but not really. We do have a port, but they are attacking us, so it does... I guess it does create it, so... What do you expect? Uh-oh. 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 It's not good. Pause it. Pause it. Hello. Hello. Because I see the stuff up here. Like... Oh, uh-oh. What happened here? Oh, Corvette. Good. Okay, not bad. That's pretty nice. Nothing bad. Good. Sh shooting down a lot of enemy plants is very nice. Um, I'm worried about, like, these naval battles, because I don't want to lose ships, because those ships are so precious. Precious. Precious ships. Oh, okay, not bad. Pretty nice. Any oh, hello. Hey, convoy's nice. Convoy, lost, and you know what happens. It happens. What are the losses so far? Because there's been 100,000 have died so far. Holy crud. Mostly from us, but we've only killed a third of a million off. That's not enough. Seriously, guys, go in. I need you to go in faster or harder than this. When in doubt, get hard. Get, mm, faster. Don't get harder. What? Mm. Anyways... Please, baby, please. Yeah, but seriously, like, I, I don't feel bad about disabling the mad mechanic. Because, like, we see this, right? Minus 49927 and a half percentage. There's nothing in the game saying that... Wh wh why that exists. So, if the game, like, bugs out or cheats, then I feel pretty good about doing that myself. So, just saying, you know. I apologize if I was, uh... I know the comment was, like, you know, being... I was being kind of negative in the last couple episodes or so, like... I apologize for that. Usually, I'm not negative or so super negative. Well, in most of my videos, or at least I try not to be. It's just as a time recording, like I've been working like 10 to 12 day hours, no, 10 to 12 hour days um, for the past five days in a row. So at the time of this recording, so I do apologize. I really do. Also, um, if you want to, I think I read this one last time. So if you want to read that one, please go ahead. As well as this one, We're friends in the weirdest of places. Yay! But yeah, like I do apologize. It's been ain't just so incredibly busy. Oh my goodness. I want you to go up here to link up. That'd be great, great, great. We lost a lot of guys in this invasion of Italy. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a lot of guys lost. But, man, we're just gonna make Italy one gigantic concentration camp. You know, they always said, Lebensraum in the east. Well, what we're gonna do is make Lebensraum <laughs> south. Lots and lots of Lebensraum. Oh yeah, we get Tehran, actually. We win. We should. At least technically we should, but... Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, no, I want them dead. I want to see these people dying in the streets. Bleeding out. I want to see them bleeding out in the streets of Zagreb. Or right next to Zagreb, I guess. Guys. Guys. Please. Right here. Right here. You see these Italians? Yeah. They don't deserve life. Sorry. If you're Italian. In this... In this... Oh! Oh! That sucks! Oh! Oh! Ah! Heavy cruiser! That's an early heavy cruiser. I'm not really too worried about that. Yeah, we, we gotta... Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh shna... That's a basic carry. It could be worse. Carriers are just not very... I'm about ready to punch a hole in my wall right now. Okay, tell me. Please tell me. Where are you based on? Northern Italy? Is that it? Nor Northern, Northern, Northern Libya? How much fuel do you have, you pieces of garbage? Seriously, how much fuel? How do you have that much fuel when you have, you're, you're operating at, like with all those planes, all your ships, all your tanks? Bruh. Bruh, like, this is why I want to turn Italy into a, a concentration camp. But, our war with the Italian and their many puppets is finally over. Our men have fought long and hard, and their work is finally seen fruition. We have won. The balance of power in Europe has drastically shifted once again. We are without doubt peerless. We are the strongest nation by far on the continent. Much needs to be taken care of now, but the hard part is over. The traitorous Italians have been brought down to their knees. Now only our greatest rival remains to be destroyed. So yeah, Italy is garbage. I, I mean, there was a couple of you guys that say use transport helicopters and just move very quickly through Italy to capture all the VPs. I mean, I was doing that, like... I know, like, VPs are what, you know, affects a surrender limit progress, or just surrender progress, so, but, like, as you saw, like, minus 50,000 percentage attack, that, that type of penalty is why we couldn't win. That's literally why. Oh, battleship was destroyed. God dang it. Italy, like, I'll be honest, like, Italy's too strong in this one. Like, like, I know this, they're just too strong, like, do they not, do they not feel the effects of the oil crisis? I mean, we do, and we're using a lot of ships, but... Bro, bro, who designed Italy? <laughs> but they're gonna get a rework later on anyways, but like, excuse me, oil crisis, hello? But yeah, this is a giant concentration camp in my mind. But we'll see what happens. Uh, American no-fly zone, don't really care, against a German giant, yeah. It's, it's still bugged, this mod is bugged still. And we lose another carrier, hopefully not. But at this point, um, who are you, who are you fighting? They're dead. Who are you fighting? Please. Who are you fighting, my friends? Why are you fighting the Italian Navy still? 
Stop! <laughs> Stop! They lost! Seriously, I'm, I want to turn Italy into a giant concentration camp. That's all I deserve. And seriously, combine. You all suck. This fleet sucks. I hate that. I hate our admirals so much. They're so bad. <laughs> ah. Go home, you pieces of garbage. Go home! Get better. Do better. But, so, that this should be done. At this point, um... Yeah, we, we literally don't have that much more space here for, like, dockyards, which sucks. Um... Honestly, these subs. I don't like using subs. Subs are not very good in my mind. At least to me. It's just a basic frigate. Yeah, we need less frigates. Get rid of this. I don't care at this point anymore. I want... I want just a massive amount of... I don't mind some subs, but... Like... We got a death stack. At this point, death stacking... The Navy... Like, even EU4, last time I played it... In Victor Victoria 2. Yeah, in Victoria 2. And Hearts of Iron 4. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the AI just never knows what to do. And they always up, end up death stacking. And it always works really well for them. Don't get me wrong. It always works very well. But, like, if you try as a player to try to do something different, you just, it's my experience. You just get a little bushwhacked. And it's just like, why? What's the point of even trying, then? Trying to get come up with a good Navy. Just death stack everything, and you'll be okay. It's unfortunate. Rapid fire guns, though. Good. That's not a bad cruiser. I like this one. Advanced cruisers. These cruisers will be okay. These light cruisers go bye-bye. Cool. It doesn't help that I didn't have that, that many planes covering the uh, ocean tiles as well. It is what it is. I should have done that a little bit better. So, I do take some blame for that, but honestly, Italy should not have that much fuel. Especially during the oil crisis. Even we don't have a lot much fuel. I think that's all we can throw on. But, more battleships. Cool. That's not going to be enough, honestly. Yeah, that's definitely not going to be enough. More. God, I wish we had more battleships. I wish we had more space. That'd be really nice. Uh, sh large ships on low on strength. Well, carriers are just not worth it. They're just 100% not worth it. That's why I'm only making like one or two, maybe. Maybe. So, military-wise, it wasn't bad. Like, it wasn't bad overall. The army did great. Except for the bug of uh, penalties. Um, the Navy sucked, but but it's kind of my fault-ish. Kind of not, but whatever. But let's do our foothold in Asia. With the land secure the most rebellious occupants dealt with, we can formally welcome Rex Commissar Kalain Azin to the Greater German Reich. This land of coastlines and mountains will be the springboard for projecting German power into the entirety of West Asia, thanks to our infrastructural improvements and the vast amount of natural resources it provides. The barbarians who invested Klein Azin continue to be a minor problem, but their time will come soon enough. We now possess one of the most defensible geopolitical regions in the world, and the Turkish threat to the Balkans has been ended forevermore. Regardless of what the future might hold for the Reich, we have achieved a great a victory for civilization. So what's next, actually? What is next? I'm not really sure. I, I, I kind of do want to know about resistance occupation. Why is there a resistance occupation? Why is it so high? We have more than enough equipment for everything here, right? We're on civ civilian oversight? Do we not have enough of... Uh, Okay, that's... Hello. Republic of Arungu? Where did you guys pop out? Leon Mba. Okay, well, I don't understand this, then. I mean, we can always send spies to help with lower resistance, but that literally makes no sense to me. This is bugged. This has got to be 100% bugged or something. I guess that was technically Italian, but, like... It's not going down at all. So, this is... Hmm. This mod's not 100% yet, man. I just gotta say that. I just... Uh, I don't know there's other comments say for me to like my negative attitude and calm down and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I like to get into it a little bit. Like I said earlier, like I've been extremely tired. I'm try trying my best I can though, but my apologies if I come off as too negative. Hmm. Now what? Because now we're looking pretty good. I'm going to turn. Like I said, Italy will become a new concentration camp. We need to take out Brittany too. Can we take them out? Also, there was another comment saying that this whole thing with uh, what was it? Algeria? Where did, did did Algeria leave? Hello, Algeria, where'd you go? Um, that was apparently for the other Algeria. Oh, they're, they're, oh, they're for the other Algeria. Because there's apparently two Algerias when the game starts. And the one that we you could use a decision to attack died against the other one. So, But I guess it's, it's fine now. We have Rex Commissar in North Africa. So, go figure. Um, probably Burgundy's probably, honestly, next... 
I'm not really looking forward to taking them out, but I hope we don't get the bug again where it's minus 50,000%. Because that's, that's, that's just sad. I mean, I'm not... It's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's frustrating, but realistically, I'm just more sad than anything else. Because it sucks. It, that really sucks. Right? I mean, you get bugged for no reason, man. What the what crap is that? This is not cool. Of course, it would help if I did some of this stuff, too. Super Heavy Battleships. The average battleship is the king of the sea. A gigantic creation of steel and fire that can crush enemies from miles away. The Kriegsmarine already has many of these behemoths, but the Ringhorn Doctrine calls for its creation that dwarfs even these monsters. The Super Heavy Battleship. Outfitted with the largest guns that the right has, covered in the thickest armor belts we can create. These giants shall be the crowning feats of the new Kriegsmarine. The average battleship is glorious and valiant as they are, having their own drawbacks, such as poor accuracy at range and a susceptibility to torpedo attacks. With new advancements in gunnery, combined with the strongest armor on Earth, both of these problems shall no longer be a concern. The su Super Heavy Battleship will make an average battleship look like a mere cruiser, and our opponents will stare in awe at the sheer capabilities of the Kriegsmarine as our shells rain down upon them from miles and miles away. Yes! Cool, we're doing that stuff. Naval Doctrine, I mean, we're actually doing the Naval Doctrine, so, I don't know. Uh, so we got some big, big daddy cruisers. Can you get any, oh yeah, it's be, bigger, better, thicker stuff. I think we're done with that stuff too, which is not bad. Um, yeah, nothing else going on right now, so we'll see what happens. You guys go ahead and train. I'm sure we, we did lose quite a few guys. We're down to 2.8 million right now, which is, it is what it is, but whatever. It's, it's still pretty, oh, we're mobilizing more. Ooh, I like that. So who's next? Which other parts of the world? Um, I don't really want to train you guys. You, they're looking not bad. You're really not looking bad at all. Have, have these guys been reinforcing? Huh. Full hold in Asia. Hannah Schmidt. Hello, Hannah Schmidt. Uh, you guys come to Brittany just in case. Well, up with. We, I should have done this naval stuff earlier, but, you know, it is what it is. Ah, uh, super battleships, because carriers suck. The battleships are our cruisers, and the race to upsize our ships. Much effort has been focused on the capital ships of the Kriegsmarine. However, one cannot forget the humble cruiser, which once again requires their attention if we wish to keep all of our navy to doctrine. Under the Ringhorn Doctrine, we shall turn our cruisers from mere screening ships to battleships in their own right, able to destroy any skirmishing force that dares to come after it. Our cruisers shall be equal to their battleships, and they will no longer even have a chance to come after our capital ships, after all. There may be less glory in the life of a cruiser crew, but there is certainly not any less importance. With these improvements, our cruisers can and certainly will take the rifle pot of the glory of the new Kriegsmarine. More naval hit chance, uh, naval max range factor goes up, and screen defense goes up as well, which we could absolutely use. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Actually, for artillery, I haven't done anything for anti-air. Now, can we throw more anti-air on our ships? I never know. It looks like we probably can. That's kind of nice. This is one of the rare times I actually do anti-air in TNO. But we're doing it anyways. A civilian budget boost, who cares about the deficit? We're only at a trillion dollars, my friends. Only at a trillion. A mere trillion. That is but a number to us. A small number. For the glory of Fuhrer Goring. Big old bag daddy. Actually, would it? I mean, the iron aspect is looking pretty good right now. We actually connect from all the way from the very tip of Africa all the way up to, like, Scandinavia. That's actually pretty nice. Now, if we can take out the Middle East, that'd be even nicer. So we can go all the way over here, too. Oh, look at that. That must be really scary in this timeline to be part of Vietnam. Because, as you see... They're literally completely surrounded by the uh, Japanese, so um, I'd be very worried about them. Or if I'd be very worried if they were around us, but after this, uh, do we not... No, we have nothing else there, so I guess we're going to go ahead and do um, super carriers, because we can. Your average carrier can launch dozens of planes at a time, sending them far and wide and find to destroy the enemy. Such pathetic output will be bit upon by a new design, the Super Carrier. According to the new blueprints, these gigantic boats will have the room and capabilities not to store but to launch hundreds of planes. If our enemies think that simply one or two dozen planes is enough to get in, buy, or buy in the new world of naval warfare, they ought to think twice. They'll pay for their insolence when hundreds of bombers come swooping down, obliterating their puny ships. The cost of these gigantic carriers is, as one would expect, enormous after all. They're a heck of a project to build, however. All will be worth it. The look on the President's face when he sees wave after wave of bombers tearing apart his grand fleet will be worth a billion Reichsmarks alone. The age of the super carrier is here, and Germany is once again at the forefront of the technological revolution. Nice. Even though they did not spare our carriers at all, and probably won't in the future, but we're doing it anyways. Because we can. Yeah. Mm, sure, why not? That seems like a good idea. Johann Stem. Herr Stem. Hello. Salut. Shalom. I guess we still have to put down the Turks, huh? Yeah, we did, I thought, mm, did we do everything for the Turks? Yeah, we pretty much did everything for them. Take the people? Well, I don't, do we really need to do this? 
Um, I guess, with the occupation of Western Russia now completed, we can start establishing a proper exploitation structure. All those who fought against us and the ones who refuse to submit even at, though they remain neutral shall be enslaved to the master race and put in camps where they'll be spending the rest of their lives toiling for the Reich and understanding the depths of their mistake. With a new extraction campaign and production facilities, our war machine will be unstoppable. The inferior shall find comfort in the fact that their sacrifice will serve to elevate the Reich to even higher reaches of power and might. Sounds great to us. Just don't look at the depth. Or the deficit. Or both. You might not make it out if you look at both. Take the people, because we love taking people. And let's go and do rebuild the AA line. The Ark Angus Ostrakhan line was the original target of Unternehmen Barbarossa. A line cutting Russia from north to south along the Volga River was to be extensively fortified and serve as a buffer against any attempt at either invading or bombing Germany from the east. However, due to the economy or economic collapse in the 50s, it was left almost undefended and subsequently lost the Second Rus Russian War. Even though we managed to repel the offensive, the border was nearly redrawn to Muscovy. Whether our offensive triumphant or offensive triumphant, we can now reverse the shame. The AA line shall be rebuilt. A Star Wars sentinel forever guarding Germania from our enemies. The first step is to rebuild the forts and trenches, a sufficient measure for now, as the Russians don't possess the means to properly threaten complex fortification systems. In due time, we shall complete the work. And the line will stand for a thousand years. Nice. It's going to serve as a natural retirement location for the radical Wehrmacht officers. Sounds good to us. Anything like that sounds awesome, awesome. Actually, we get six, almost 7,000 people every month. That's not bad. Um, anything else here? No, not really. Hmm, reclaim Madagascar, I don't know why that's still there, but hey, oh well. You know what I love? I would love to have more nuclear reactors. <sighs> John Glenn has nothing on us. Absolutely nothing. Show the seeds, or sow the seeds. With the most of Russia under our control, the few pitiful remnants are cowering in fear of a war machine. Like the cowards they are. It's time to launch the last propaganda initiative, where we'll try to convince as many as possible to desert and either join our cause, or simply stand idle as the last vestiges of Bolshevism are utterly crushed. Even if they don't revolt against their commanders, every deserter is one less Russian to fight. Not that there are that many already left to fight. Very good. Ah, oh, it's a little ahead of time, that sucks. I'll grab that too, because you can. So fire control 2 is totally fine. 4 is totally fine as well. Um, where are these cannons? These big, thicky cannons. If they're not thick, I don't want them. There you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's go for 3, because we don't... As you can tell, we just don't have the uh, dockyards for them yet. Um... We really don't have any dockyards, do we? Hmm. That's too many, uh... Too many subs still. That's fine. We're making... Well, we want to make a lot of cast. Holy crap. We don't have the military... Where happened to our military factories? Where do they all... Oh! I have 200... No one are doing so well. Wait, why do we have... What? Wait, so earlier in the campaign, we didn't really have a stockpile of this, but now we have a stockpile? Um. Go to 40 for now? Uh. I'm. Huh. I'm not really sure, but okay, whatever. Just have some coffee. Alright. Sure, why not? There you go. You guys go and train. And you guys come up here and be dis more disappointing, please. Build that wall. Once again, the Fuhrer found himself in the unenviable position of hearing out the demands of Ferdinand Schorner. A great map of Russia lay on the table, dug out from the archives all the way back from Operation Barbarossa for the purpose of illustrating some point. The map was, of course, hopelessly outdated, but Goring thought he could see the direction the conversation was being steered. And the conclusion of the whole operation, unwelcome until now, and uncompleted, the Ark Angos Ostrakhan line to complete complete the separation of Russia from Europe and sure Germany has enough Lebensraum for centuries to come. Just go to Italy, please. And let me guess, you want to refortify the AA line? Goring maintained a neutral expression, lacing his fingers together. He tried to quantify the manpower and resources required to finish a project, but gave up rapidly. Schoener was unfazed by his plans of predictability and plowed on. Indeed, my fear, the plan is self-evident in its value. Had we completed the fortifications rather than resting on our laurels prematurely, the Soviets would have never been able to regroup and push us back. And Himmler's field coup would have never even begun. Late as we are, completing the line is the only way to ensure the Russians never a chance to take Moscow. The Fuhrer thought that Shona's concern had little to do with the ideology or national security, but and much more to do with the influence he would gain with the troops on the eastern frontier. 
The line may have some strategic value, but it would likely be outweighed by the colossal cost of building a wall across a whole continent. Not to mention the cost of refusal. He could see the spit spiteful look in Shona's eyes, even on the best of days, and had no desire to annoy him further. So right now, the approval is absolute. Power is very low, influence is very low. And that was another comment that from, from you guys saying that uh, it's okay to, like, we just have to watch their loyalty. I mean, don't be too worried about it. Their loyalty is very high, so it's fine take your money. Decrease influence and power, greatly decrease the loyalty. No extra funding will be uh, authorized. Decrease the loyalty. Um, I don't see what happens. Why does it greatly decrease? Now, after you do that, it's 85. That's, that's good, right? That's good. That's good. Um, national Socialism stands triumphant. Siberia was home to several movement or yeah, movement sympathizing movements sympathizing with national daddyism by defeating the last remnants of the Soviet Union. We've undoubtedly proved the superiority of our ideology compared to the corrupt scions of Marx and Engels. If we play our cards right, we can motivate several such movements to join our cause. While they'll never be proper Aryans, we'll make fine collaborators when we integrate these lands into the Greater Reich. Absolutely. Sorry, that was my water bottle. Or water jug, or what do we call this? Cool. And we're still building? Yes, please. Because, oh, wow, we're building a lot of civvies. Um... Yeah, I mean, technically, yeah. We, I like civvies. I like having a bigger industry. You never know if you need, might need a bigger one. Wow, we have a lot of radar around here. Not enough, but it's pretty good. Oh, oh, look at this too. Look at that. Nice. The second rate. Have you seen these numbers, mind you? Uh, Stuttgart waved a folder like it was the only thing that mattered in the world. Of course I've seen them, Wilhelm. Have you spoken to Shona? You know I do my best to avoid the man at all costs. Then you know that this is a necessary sacrifice to prevent that ugly dude from getting any ugly up goring sheer to point a glance with the Reich's minister. That I understand, but there are steps that can be taken to mitigate the damage he does. If he seriously thinks this wall is a good investment, he's even dumber than I thought. Stuttgart's photo flopped to the side, limply. He has nothing of the sort, and you would be a fool to let him hear you say that. Goring glance turned into a glare. Stuttgart held up his hands in a resignation. All I say, am, all I'm saying is this: we could stand to save a great deal on the materials. Do we really need to waste high-quality concrete and steel on a wall the Russians will never reach? We could stand to dilute what Shuan and his boys get, so they'll get never be in a position to notice the difference. Perhaps Stuttgart did have a point. While Shuan himself would almost certainly make note of the change in the supply situation, and he'd have to have that conversation with the dude. The chances of the Russians pulling together enough to pose a true threat to the AA line, pure concrete or aggregate were minuscule. Every penny counted considered the amount he was already spending on the oversized Wehrmacht. Make the changes. Only the best for our boys. We already are blowing up the economy's debt, or the debt and the deficit, so who cares? Money is not an issue. Just drive them into the sea. The time for the final push has come. Our panzer division shall route the pitiful leftovers of the Russian warlords towards the ocean, where they won't have anywhere else to retreat. Let's see how many of them will be ready to jump into the sea and commit the ultimate sacrifice for the ideology. I have the very suspicion that uh, very, 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 very few will. After all, Bolsheviks are known for the cowardice. A little bit ahead of time, still. So. Armor? I like having really thick tanks. You can't pierce through our tanky boys, tanky daddies. Oh, yes. Cool. And how many more days? We got six days left, which is fine. Um, yeah, overall not too bad. IFVs, I don't really like IFVs, so goodbye. Cool, thank you very much. Uh, um, so yeah, not bad. And we're looking really quite good. I kind of wish Slovakia didn't exist. I wish it was part of the Balkans, just because it will look nicer, maybe. But, eh, it is what it is. Slovakia always has to be there somewhere. Threats in the Japanese. Oh, with the recent expansion, we've come to border the Japanese of Vladivostok. Our former allies might protest and ask for a former possession back, after all. When they ceded it to the Russians, they didn't expect us to conquer it. But now it's too late to ask for its return. All of Russia has been conquered by the German mites, and no one will stand against it. Perhaps stationing a couple of nuclear missiles near the border will keep the Japanese in check, so that they don't go ahead of, uh, have the, uh, go ahead of themselves. Want it? Maybe, we'll see. Five whole days left. Actually, what do we have here? Is it still just ships? Oh, ba oh basic anti air. Okay, so that's actually different. That's nice. Something different this time. And anti air. Basic advanced anti air. Very good. Ships, are you pathetic again? Yeah, probably very, just a little bit at least. Very good, thank you. Um, and there you go. Drive him into the sea, please. Thank you. Threaten the Japanese, because the Japanese totally won't nuke us someday. The end of the Rus. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at all this stuff. Victory lasts with the complete conquest of Russia. The German Reich proves once more its might against those who dared to stand defiant before the glory of the eagle and the swastika. The Russian people is no more either assimilated, enslaved, or driven into the wilderness to fight like the rats they are. A grand triumph shall be held in Germania. All the military leaders shall be present alongside the Führer for this momentous occasion, where the power of the Reich shall be exposed for all to see. Heil das Reich. Heil Germania. Heil Goring. Yes. Oh, are we supposed to be over here? Why are you guys all the way over here? Where there's a whip, there's a way. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. 
These subs kind of suck. But Vadim's shoulders burned as he swung his mattock. The icy Russian soil refused to give in easily. The constant movement of cartwheels and caterpillar tracks had churned up thick wet mud over that repeated cycles of freezing and thawing had created a dozen, half dozen, layers of frozen ground that was closer to rock than dirt. A little extra strength would be appreciated, preferably that of a jackhammer or one of those excavators he'd seen on the back of the German trucks. But those were too valuable to be risked in the unskilled hands of a conscript such as himself. Vadim allowed himself a brief moment to catch his breath and wipe the sweat from his brow, which had gathered there despite the cloud his breath produced in the cold. As he breathed, he surveyed the horizon. From this section of the would-be trench half sunk into the earth, he could see but a small segment of the fortification's extent. He had never seen anything like it. He heard tales of distant China. Where a great wall separated the civilized world from the barbarians to the north, this was the only comparison he could even consider relevant. For as far as the eye could see, and what he had heard a thousand times further and yet more, Russians like him labored digging trenches, cutting down forests, draining swamps, hanging barbed wire, installing bunkers and fortifying choke points, building a wall that the likes of which the world had never seen. What's the order, Ruski? His reverie was interrupted by a Bach in German. Outside the trench, the soldier supervising his group was looking down at him and idly playing with the action of his rifle. Just catching my breath, sir, he replied in rudimentary German. Vadim swallowed as the soldier walked to the lip of the trench, seeing his discomfort. The German chuckled and spat into the trench, nearly missing Vadim. Back to work, no unsanctioned breaks. Vadim nodded, relieved he had avoided a beating. Vadim's shoulders burned as he swung his mattock. These states had also had their population subdued by the army, giving us a 5% bonus to knock or manpower. Ooh! I love it! So we've got all this stuff done. Obviously, we didn't do a lot of this stuff because we just had to go, 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 but... Oh, I wish we had more time for it, but... That concludes that part. Now we can go straight on to War Plan C next. But I think I want to wait. I want to do the German Leviathans. The world is about and out about the brand new Kriegsmarine, and a wave of tears swept through our enemies. Our spies report hurried panic meetings between the admirals in Norfolk and Tokyo, exactly as we expected. We one cannot blame them for the panic. We will certainly would not be any less uneasy if they, if Japan or America had rolled out such powerful ships as we have. They are right to huddle in terror, of course. Our fleets are nearly impenetrable. Our cruisers can shatter any skirmishing force. Our capital ships can single-handedly level fleets and cities alike, and our cruisers are the best in the world. With such power at disposal, one has to wonder what a nation could do to resist such an overwhelming force. Indeed, it seems at this point only a nuclear strike could destroy our ships. Whatever the Americans and Japanese decide on doing, it's clear that the Kriegsmarine is a new king of the seas. Our people cheer and shout as the ships sail by, knowing that the Reich is the greatest nation on the earth. Never ships at first contact, capital ship armor goes up by 5%, screen defense goes up as well. What's not to love? I'm not sure what this will do, Masters of the Earth. So we did all this stuff already, which is nice, because I love the sun gun. Restoring the army's grandeur. A long time ago, before the unification of the Vatalem, Prussia was called an army with a state. This army soon unified the German Reich and became one of the strongest military forces in the history of the world. And I do apologize for this, but it just, I want that time to go on. Despite this, the Wehrmacht was never granted the true power it deserved, even in the Reich's glory days. Our troops have defended Germany through the centuries, and they will continue to do so in glory and grandeur for a thousand years. Now, it increases the power and influence, and costs us more money, but it eh, greatly increases loyalty. It's fine. I wanted to finally do that one. Finally do it, so. Any other ships? We do have probably another sub. That's fine, whatever. Uh, are you guys pathetic still? Yes, you are. Not you guys, you guys watching, but like these ships are just... We have quite a few carriers. We just need more battleships. We need, we just need better ships. Just, just, just better ships, please. Just better ships. Uh, fighters without equal. Time and time again, the Luftwaffe has proven themselves to be the utmost elite fighting force in the skies. Our fighter pilots outclass even the most veteran of our adversaries, showing the world that our pilots are forced to be reckoned with. The Luftwaffe has created some of the greatest pilots in history, and they should be recognized and commended accordingly. Absolutely. Um, you know what? Let's go some. We're going to research pretty much everything here, but let's see. This cruiser holds. Um, secondary batteries, level 4 armor. I don't think we did anything for the radar yet. I've kind of ignored it. Fire control as well. Uh, anti air is okay, but anti better anti air? No. What was that? Uh, rapid fire guns. Slows us down just a little bit more, but it gives. Uh, it's honestly not that much better. It's really not that much better, which is kind of sucks, but whatever. Yeah, it's alright. We'll do that one. Um, cruisers. Cruisers. Three and four. Bing, bong, bong, bing. Because now we go one, two. Because I still want to make these. Three, five. Yeah, five ish. It's fine. There you go. Cruisers are just better than destroyers. Um, yep, that's fine. That's good. And then we'll do the fires of the equal. Knights of the Sky would be probably good. We do want to do Masters of the World, new missile designs. We got so much research here, so we we shall see. 
And it's weird that we don't, we're not forced to like do the other books like Warpound C yet, so. It's very weird. Work from home. Vladimir has been not left the trench for weeks. He and other conscripts have been thrown up a tarpaulin, tarpaulin and were expected to make do. The dribble of rain pushing its way through the gaps in the sheeting draped over the squalid hole had turned the freshly excavated dirt straight and back into mud. And most of his comrades had taken to sleeping upright to avoid drowning in mud. Propped up by the tools, well, it was mostly mud, the digging of latrines had been deemed a secondary priority compared to the main fortifications. And there were few Russians willing to leave the trench at night, when a trigger happy German might make a simple toilet break for an escape attempt. And Vadim poked his head out. From under the tarpaulin, he could see the corpse pile. He could smell it no matter where he was. The Germans kept separate from the J Russians in their tents, but Vadim had been able to overhear a few words or on, while on duty. Most of the soldiers assumed the Russians were incapable of understanding their language, despite the fact that half the conscripts were Muscovite, and many of the others had picked up smatterings of the trade language that had built up around what used to be at the border between Muscovy and Russia. Despite the brutal punishments that were being dealt with increasingly or increasing regularity to the lazy workers, work was apparently proceeding according to schedule. Once the work was done, Russia would be split into two, with a border not nearly so porous as it once preceded it. What could become of him then? Shipped out to just to another conflict to dig holes and live in his, in his own crap, or just dispose of another face in the corpse pile. There must be some way out, some path between the sentries that would take him away. They wouldn't bother searching for him once he was out, but he was all but worthless, but that much was clear. But which way? Back west into Muscovine, and hoped to remain unnoticed by the authorities, or east into Russia, where who knows what awaited him. He'd heard the Soviet Union was restored far east, but then he'd also heard of the bandits masquerading as Germans who had slaughtered anyone who deemed they deemed too Russian. The crack of a distant gunshot reached the trench, and a few of the others shifted in their sleep. Vadim's grip tightened around his mattock, and he dreamed of freedom. Today you, tomorrow me, how about we get some better transport helicopter companies? Even though we're not really going to use them. But that's the sky. Even the greatest of pilots can have humble beginnings, and by making this clear to the people, we can usher in a new era of elite German aces. The German people will no longer see the path to becoming a pilot as unattainable or impossible, but rather as an honorable and worthy position, given out to the best and brightest Germans who are willing to give their all. Call for celebration. The Germans were drunk as heck, high on the accomplishments of others. For the first time in what felt like weeks, Vadim had been allowed for a break, for there was no more work to do. He and his Russian com comrades, for all their hard work, had been awarded respite, a chance to lean on the shovels and gaze at the mile of trenches they dug by him, Vadim. Could have done with one of the beers the soldiers were passing around, but for now, he was just grateful to have good, clean water. The radio was blaring out some patriotic German song, immediately followed by a speech by Fyodor Goring, congratulating the troops and laborers, the German laborers, of course, on the completion of what we referred to as the eighth wonder of the world, the Archangelsk Ostrakhan Line. The division of Germany and Russia was now a sharp line on, on the map, rather than the blur it once been, and what many other young Russians considered a small golden age of enterprise compared to the Union and Reich that sandwiched them. The old enterprise getting the, done these days certainly wasn't sending the profits his way. He sipped his water for the moment content. His shoulders no longer ached, he surveyed the wilderness expanse to the east. Nothing but the fields as far as the eye could see, no cover. Nothing but easy shooting should some a-hole look up from his drinking and back to his duties, but still. There was no time left, they'd be moving out very soon. The best thing he could see was the goalie, a few meters, a few hundred meters away, leading southeast. If he had reached there in a couple of hours, when drinking in darkness had dulled their senses, he might be able to crawl out of sight. The rumble of a truck interrupted his thoughts, and he turned. The truck was backing up to the trench, where his com comrades were enjoying their rest. Soldiers, their rifles shorter and looking much more sober than their drunken friends, were accompanying him. Ruskies in the truck, next project! Vadim gazed into the back of the truck like it was a gaping pit. He was out of time. I wonder what they'll be doing, or where I'll be when they open the door. Nice. Restore the old fortifications of Ostwald, the Siegfried Line, Air Shelters, remnants of the Maginot Line, as well as various Czech, Austrian, and Polish built installations. The list of old bunkers and fortifications that dot the landscape of the Reich is long, far longer than one expects to be. The National Defense Committee recently brought to attention the pitiful state of many of these buildings, as the Reich's defense network is vast, and funding needed to rebuild everything necessary to properly defend in case of a full invasion will be very expensive. And some in the committee have proposed a scaled back version of either working on the air defenses, with some citing reasons. The air power is vastly more important than ground forces, and with some arguing to restore the bunkers, retorting that a lack of defense in case of the Reich's invasion would lead it to it quickly getting occupied. Alternatively, we could simply attempt to maintain what's left, which may leave the committee disgruntled while the economy would be practically unimpacted, because I did do repair the Reich's defenses. While the Reich is littered with bunkers and underground installations from the World War in the 50s, many of them are either outdated or in varying states of decay or disrepair. If we want to sufficiently protect our people from nuclear attacks in their aftermath, then we will need to restore and modernize as much of these legacy shelters as possible. Restore everything. $90,000. The air defenses need some work. $50,000, or get the bunkers back in shape. Everything! 
Ah, modern as a Siegfried Lime. One especially large bunker complex left to rot. In the recent times, other fortresses of the Siegfried Lime, built originally to ward off any potential French attacks in the heart of the Reich. Now the line can prove useful once again. With some engineering tricks, it can be refurbished to both protect the populations of Alsace, Baden, and the Palatinate. Having nuclear shelters needed, but also serve as an additional safeguard against the Burgundians, but modern as a Führer bunker. The Führer bunker was a contingency bunker for use by the Führer himself, should the situation of the Reich ever become desperate enough. Thankfully, it has so far not been needed. This means, however, that the bunker is just as outdated as the rest of the Reich shelters, for a man of fear growing stature. Such a meager housing is of course wholly insufficient. It's time for a modernization project, and only costs us, that's cost us less than a billion dollars. Great, great. Doc and cover, my friends. The insidious powers that stand against us were like nothing more than to destroy our very way of life in our future. Thus every school in the Reich is instructed to hold multiple duck and cover drills every year. Even our youth will know, then know, how to protect itself from the evil attempts by the Reich's enemies to destroy us with their nuclear arsenal. Get more stability, lose some political power, which is fine. Unta undeckal, what gets more recruitable population factor, and factory bomb vulnerability goes down. Modernization of the Fear Bunker. With Fear the Fear Goring's nephew, Heinz Todal, in charge of the Fear Bunker, a most grand rework of the place has begun. The stuffy and old fashioned design of what Adolf Hitler had left behind would have to be moved out of the way, making way for Goring's own lavish tastes. Decorated with the finest examples carried out from the Karen Hall, the Fear Bunker will be nothing if a paramount testament to Germany's endless wealth, a small Karen Hall below Germania. Nice. New missile designs. The nuclear arms race means a constant effort to improve, to overcome, and to adapt. Obviously, our missiles are no exception to this. A fresh investment into new and improved missile designs will ensure our cells can't be taken out before the missiles leave for the counter strike. Nice. More money pouring into it. Ah, love it. Just spend more. Just, just spend more. That's all. Just spend more. Um, since we're here anyway, torpedoes. Maybe we get some torpedoes. We could probably really use them on some of our cruisers when we get them upgraded again later on. Probably. Probably upgraded. We'll see what happens, though. Uh, not bad. We're still building up more cities, which is not bad. More airplanes. Air bases, I mean. So. And unfortunately, we have nowhere else to build this stuff, which is so sad. Ducking cover, my friends, and safeguard the Volk. With the recent efforts, the security of our Volk from nuclear annihilation has begun. It's not ended, then at least mitigated. Our grand investment into both technology and concrete has ensured. The German people rejoice for such a caring fuel that has taken it upon himself to spare them from the horrors of nuclear war. So 540 days, we get more weekly war support, division attack and defense on core territory, and greatly increase the load to the militarists. Oh, that's fine with us, but new missile designs first. And safeguard the Volk. Duck and cover, my friends. Duck and cover. Very good. Because I'm trying to get all this stuff done before we do War Plan C. Because War Plan C, we're just going to hit the floor running, hopefully. I could be very, very wrong about that, but you know, you never know. Oh, six more ships. Hey. Another carrier that's going to get blown up super quickly. So be it. So be it. That's yeah, fine. Come on. Come on over. Go ahead and train if you need to. Go ahead and go ahead. Go ahead. A new generation of missiles that the Reich's missile technology could use an upgrade in new designs is not a question in the council. It is an ununanimous or unanimous certainty. Nevertheless, the process itself has turned into a squabble of conflicting viewpoints. A significant portion of the council believes that, although improving our outdated missiles will be a boon and in fact a necessity in order to remain in parity with the US and Japan, rushing ahead to update all of them would only lead to a waste of funds in the future as missile technology advances rapidly yet. Another part of the council thinks that having a stockpile of long-range missiles or weapons fall behind in terms of capability will lead to the other two superpowers preying on a supposed weakness to project power across the globe, and that a rapid modernization attempt now will prevent any future opportunities for the Reich's enemies to pounce on them. In the end, the better divide in the council has reached fewer Goring's ears and the council is asked to make the final decision. Every moment we waste is a danger, and the missiles must be upgraded quickly. Slow and steady wins the nuclear race. Nuclear stockpile slowly improving at a monthly rate of plus one. Um, wait. Uh, nuclear slowly improving month. So why would you choose... It costs more. Nuclear stockpile re reduced on one level, and slowly decay. Um... It gets worse, but... Uh, wait, what? So, well, two a month. So, I don't understand. Slowly improving, slowly improving. So... It went down by one. What was the point of that, then? Huh. <laughs> Vomschen Jäger Ascendant? The German paratroopers are some of the most highly trained, highly specialized soldiers. They are a credit to the nation, to the race, and to the Fuhrer. Much of their job is, of course, done in the air. That is why they are members of the Luftwaffe, of course. But the paratroopers also maintain the ability to put up a fight on the ground, not being members of the Heer. These men are furthermore much more willing to do their duty and follow the orders of the Fuhrer, even above Schorner. 
Naturally. Such talented and loyal individuals deserve nothing less than the best from the nation. Goring is arranged for the paratroopers to receive only the best equipment and training, even when such things would not be beneficial to the regular mission of a paratrooper, despite the blame of favoritism being shown. It's clear to the Fuhrer that this is a necessary measure. If the Hale's loyalty to the Goring falls into question, there will be friendly boots on the ground in the skies of Germania. Also, I did not show you yet, but apparently America elected McNamara as president. Roll up our sleeves, so we'll see what happens. And... Uh, new gunships. It has been years since one could field a proper air force using only planes, but that is the assumption that the Reich seems to have been making. As technology has adapted and grown, the Lupov has remained rather stagnant in terms of new advances, with the bureaucrats in Germania unwilling to devote the time, funds, and energy to make Germania rule the skies once more. This lethargy, of course, has ended as soon as Goring has assumed the title of Europe, with a truly experienced and knowledgeable man in command of the Reich. As the German people will know cr and begin crafting and implementing helicopters, gunships, and other more effective means of air combat into our engines of warfare. With a fully updated, outfitted, and upgraded Luftwaffe, there's not a chance that the German Reich can lose to the dangers or degenerates who would combat our supremacy. Heil Goring! And then, assume uh, Speckhoff's burden. Naturally, those Germans who work in special operations divisions are the best, most talented soldiers that Germany can field, having a degree of boldness and patriotism that impresses even the Fuhrer. However, these talented individuals have wasted away under the mismanagement of the Heer and Kriegsmarine. Not enough funding is given to them, nor do the military and naval officers seem to understand the burden that special operations soldiers carry. Truly, if the Reich's best and brightest are to continue their mission, a change must be made. A magnificent Fuhrer, however, has come up with a solution. All existing spec ops divisions within the Wehrmacht are to be folded into the main administration of the Luftwaffe. After all, it is the Reich's Air Force that truly recognizes the skill and dedication required to succeed at such specialized tasks. Additionally, because of Goring's service, he knows the officer corps of the Luftwaffe best and can easily vouch for the competence and incorruptibility. Truly, the Fuhrer has come up with an ideal solution to this problem. Nice. Valkenthruppen. The development of the helicopter transport has proven to be immensely beneficial to our troops on the ground, allowing the rapid relocation of both soldiers and supplies. Perhaps we should further pursue developing this technology in order to create rapid response division assault divisions to further mobilize the German war machine. Happy 1973, my friends. The parachute is obsolete. As of late, it has become increasingly clear to German high command that the implementation of the parachute on the battlefield is dysfunctional and obsolete. Parachute runs have proven to be far more dangerous than they are worth, and we simply cannot risk wasting German lives on the battlefield. Instead, air Assault divisions shall be utilized in order to transport our soldiers on the ground and to provide tactical support to the Wehrmacht. Oops, the wrong one I clicked on. That'd be so nice to get, but it's okay. Hmm. We haven't. Oh, we haven't got the better tanks yet. Oh, my bad. Also, we were running out of tanks because because uh, we were over here and they were like eating our guys up, which sucks. Why is resistance so high here? I do not understand. That's what makes no sense. I guess we didn't complete everything here yet, but still. Yeah. Over here it's core, but over here it's not. Which I don't understand, but whatever. Whatever. But, but we all know that the parachute's obsolete, so. That's why I removed those soldiers, and we need more tanks. Way more tanks, so. Over any ground, break any foe. From the dense African jungle to the sprawling fields of Russia, our Lufthansa shall reign supreme. Regardless of terrain or fighter pilots will maneuver through the skies to annihilate all those who stand in opposition to Deutschland. Or the Vatalam. War Plan C will be next, which will probably be the last plan. Oh, we, we could do that one too, but we'll see what happens. Um, be, get better APCs. Please, and thank you. Anything else here yet? Nope, and that's okay with us. So after that one... so Everything here is done. Everything here is done. 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 We still didn't do the Masters of the World, but that's alright. And we still have this one stuff to do as well. But we'll get through that in time. Uh, we'll do War Plan C by the end of this video, of course. So, over any ground, we break any foe. Uh, Masters of the World, how about that? The internal corruption and decadence of the party prevent the Reich from reaching its true glory, but now that the Wehrmacht has been baptized by the flame of civil war, the Aryan people are destined to become masters of the world. Free from petty political interference in the Reichstag, the army will fulfill its purpose without friction to lead us into greatness. All hail the Wehrmacht, the sword of the German nation. All hail Germany, master of the world. None shall be able to stand the might of the Wehrmacht. Now, hopefully this doesn't do anything bad. We'll just get a description saying that, you know, everyone else sucks and that we're the masters of everything, but we'll see. The detriment of our air superiority missions get to our enemies and ground forces will be increased by 10%. So basically, I guess 10% more uh, air superiority, maybe? That'd be kind of nice. All right, so after that one, we can rebuild the process as Krieg's Academy. Greatly increase loyalty and influence, but I don't know if I want to increase their influence. That doesn't seem very smart to do right now, so. Uh, oh, we missed one of that. Thank you very much. Anything else here? No. Cool. So after that one, I guess we're going to go straight for a war plan and see them. First, we pacify the Shattered Reich. Then we reestablish our grip on Europe. 
and re recreating the reality of Adolf Hitler's vision. Now, we stand victorious once again, having achieved the true dream of Adolf Hitler, without the imperfections of fickle allies to betray us and the Ru Russian remnants to harass our armies. Now, after so much war, we are finally coming to the finale of the play, the true Endsieg. Only the nuclear powers and those small states that stand between us remain, the asset state of Burgundy, the decadent democracy of America, and the empire of Japan. They will be stronger foes than that we have any faced thus far, but we are still they are still untimes regardless of how many nukes and guns they may point at us. We march to the ultimate victory. Sieg Heil! Very cool. And wrangling the Reichstag, huh? Has not completed. Militaries panic. Um everyone by this piece of head. Yeah, people are not panicking, so. Wasn't there someone saying that we shouldn't do War Plan C? I'm not really sure, so hold on, let's finish off this one. And we're gonna save together. Let us save together, because I'm not exactly sure. Maybe maybe it is, maybe it's not, I'm not really sure, so. I would do want to take a Brittany, which is weird we can't take him out yet, but whatever. It's fine. We'll deal with them in time. And let's go ahead and do signal companies because we can. Yes, please. War plan C. Nice. Let's see what happens. That's a lot of debt. A deficit to income ratio is only 3 to 20%. That's all. That's all. That's okay. You know. Whatever. War plan C. All right. Now, what do we have? Oh boy, there's a lot here. War plan C. Heinrich Himmler sought to betray the Reich during the 50s now. As riding a postal of a state shall be burst under the threads of the Hell's tanks. The crumbling Japanese Empire betrayed its promises and broke from the Axis. Now they shall be drowned out by the might of the Kriegsmarine. The corrupt Judeo the capitalist Americans humored themselves by calling Germany the sick man of Europe. Now they'll be reduced to scorch marks by a glorious Luftwaffe. The time has come to prepare ourselves. One last time shall we enter the breach to transform the fate of the entire world. And the planet itself will bow to the majesty of the Aryan race. To arms, men, to arms. How many tanks do we not have? Why is it getting... Something's bugged in the game or something right now. It's really just bugged. The game is... Because mm, we're here, right? We're, we're hanging out. How do we have minus 3,500? It's got to be bugged. I swear, man. I swear it's got to be bugged. How many are we making every single day? Let's come over here. How many tanks? We have 32 factories. Two a day. Oh, no. It's not bugged. My apologies. It's not bugged. It's not bugged at all. Because I forgot that production costs went way up. So that's my fault. My fault completely. I do take responsibility for that. My fault. Nice. Yeah. These tanks are not that much better, but they just cost so much more. Alright, that's a case. Go with that. We're gonna need a lot. Hmm. A hundred? Mad dogs. Goring sat at his desk in his private office with none other than Ferdinand Schoener sitting across from him. He felt defeated. The militarists had near total control over the entirety of the administrative ad apparatus, and there was very little he could do to stop their madness. Schoener, Goring noted, did not have that smug smirk on his face when, wherever he knew that he had one up or outmaneuvered a rival. No words really needed to be spoken as Goring read the bill that Schoener had ruthlessly dropped on his desk for the fear of supper stamp of approval. It was no wonder that Schoener looked dejected. The leader of the military faction, that clique that now dominated the government, had lost control over rabid warmongers. Goring skimmed over the bill and in anticipation of the great struggle, blah blah blah. More of the same nonsense. What stood out, Otto Ernst Rehme, and reward for devoted and distinguished service, is also to be promoted to the rank of field marshal. Gosh darn it. The most wild other mad dog was now a top leader. No wonder Shona looked defeated. Even he had lost control over the militarists. It seemed as though a war with the other superpowers of the world was now inevitable. Goring wordlessly pulled out his seal and stamped the bill, handing it back to Shona. The only words spoken between the two were finally said by Goring, although not shouted, his words rang throughout the otherwise empty office. Is this what you wanted? Fall Schwartz. Look at that. That looks so cool. Goring's Caribbean vacation. That looks awesome. Fall Rockwell. Ooh. Uh, one of the greatest blunders ever committed by the Reich was its fear to once and for all destroy the decadent American pigs at the end of the last world war. The momentum was on our side and worth the Japanese as our allies. We could have broken them. Alas, the late Fuhrer was convinced by defeatists and lazy incompetent toadies to sign a conditional surrender. Now it falls the fear of Goring, his successor in every sense of the world at this point, to finish the job it began. What makes America a unique case among our enemies is a complete separation from any territory within our sphere, making them quite separate from our weapons. That is why the greater plan to eliminate the eagle will require taking the long route across two continents, in fact. Which, maybe I shouldn't take that one yet, but Schwal Schwartz. Across our many campaigns or conquests for global domination, we have destroyed many errant subjects and traitors from our allies. This time is different, however, for in the coming fight we shall be pitted against the result of the Reich's ultimate sin and failure. The black dogs of the SS believe themselves above us, they think they hold the secrets of the Aryan race to themselves and plot our destruction in the shadows of their little fiefdom. We'll appease them no more. They must be crushed once and for all if the Reich is to know true peace and victory. From the earliest days in the Nazi party, 
Heinrich Himmler and Goring were rivals. The Fuhrer always knew that his scheming little snake was not one to be trusted and his intuition was always correct. Then there was nothing he could do to openly fight back against the man whom Hitler held as close confidant. But now, now there was no Hitler to save the man of the Black Sun. Or against the man of the Black Sun. Fall Dammerung. This is it. All of our sacrifices and years of war have led us to this moment. We're finally in a position to commerce with, uh, go commence with Operation Dammerung. Resistance fighters to this day continue to fight an unending war from the shadows as giant corporations dominate the sphere, only interested in lining their own pockets. The Empire of the Rising Sun has fallen far since the last, their last great victories, which gives us the opportunity to strike deep into the economic heartland, continental Asia. Our greatest challenge is establishing a land border of the Japanese sphere. We have two equally ambitious routes. The first proposed plan is to kick down the rotten door to the east one last time. They finally conquered the Rus. The terrain of Siberia is inhospitable, and we need to build supporting infrastructure, but it's the most direct route to Japan's holdings. Alternatively, we could surprise the world in making our approach south through Iran and India. Though the going will be tough, to say the least, it would be completely unpredictable. Our aggression would likely catch Japan off balance, which could be decisive in the coming war. In either scenario, we'll also focus on making contact with unwilling participants in Japan's sphere by offering the nations change to Japan's freedom or to Japan freedom. We could give some much-needed friends and footholds in the East. With the German army at their throats and rebels stabbing their backs, Japan cannot hope to hold against the might of the Reich. Ein Schwarzer Tag, the bunker was filled to the brim. The fans recirculating already stale air about the room. Despite the stuffy atmosphere, the Führer's enthusiasm was infectious, and not a man could deny the buzz of anticipation. To his left sat Reinhard Galen, bizarrely still wearing mirrored sunglasses despite the fact that they were 100 feet underground. To his left was Ferdinand Schoner, surrounded by his cohorts of sycophantic young officers with chests of shiny medals. Goring's foot was tapping at the floor at a frantic pace. Galen had instructed the Führer's staff to attempt to keep him under control, but it seemed that they had been unable to keep him from maintaining a supply of amphetamines. Means. He inwardly cursed, and hoped Shorn at least would be able to keep the military situation out of his twitching hands. Bloody Ferdinand was perhaps one of the only men capable of keeping the invasion falling to disaster. Shorn was doing his best to walk the Fuhrer through the invasion plan, but Goring was more concerned with premature celebration than planning. I want him alive, you know. I want to see the man, or the look on the man's face when he sees his own domain of flames before that bullet hits the skull. Shorn scowled, of course, but first, Schwartz well, must be completed. If you draw your attention to Sector 6... You know, I haven't seen him since the West Russian War. I never liked him even before then. Always knew he was scum. If only Hitler was here to see see this. God, it, will, it would be glorious. Keelan did his best to not bury his head in his hands. Tell him to begin operations. 30 seconds to midnight. Yeah. Do, do, do we attack Brittany or anything like that? Um, no, nothing else. We can disable the war timer still, but that's fine. Um... A swift end of madness. There's no time to waste with the games of subterfuge and espionage. We must eliminate the Burgundians' th uh, threats as least possible. Prepare their blow. Sure, why not? Well, military might will, of course, be the cornerstone of the defeat of the traitor state. Spymaster Galen makes a good point when he argues that Burgundy requires a more unique handling. Given its nature as an all-knowing uh, and completely secret police state with an intelligence capability among the world's best, it certainly could be worth it to attempt to break their greatest strength. Naturally, this cannot be done with bullets or bombs. We must fight fire with fire. The Albears begin mobilizing for actions on an unprecedented scale in the Reich's history to do their part against one of the greatest, our greatest threats. The beginning of the end. The rally was perhaps Nuremberg's largest one yet, not since the founding days of the party back in the 30s, had such a crowd gathered in anticipation and celebration. It was hard to compare. The sheer amount of people to those days, though, attendance was off the charts to Ramos' pleasure. He stood in front of the podium, relishing the cheers from over 100,000 of his fellow countrymen that stood in front of him, overfilling the plaza. My fellow Germans, my brothers, my countrymen. Raymond began. The crowd roared back in assent, their approval was shaking the ground itself. Ramos stood, a large grin on his face. This, he thought, must be how Hitler felt. He scanned the massive crowd, look upon the massive swastika banners hanging from the buildings, then at the old man sitting to his right, with the Reich's highest ranking officer sitting around him. Goring for his part did look regal, his uniform neatly pressed as always, with his badges glinting in the afternoon sun. His expressiveness soon, however, was stoic. No emotions were expressed on his stony face. Raymond knew what he didn't want to be there, or knew he didn't want to be there. But what could he do? What kind of fear would miss this occasion? The crowd's noise began to die down. Today is a momentous day, Raymond continued, for the Reich is about to claim what is rightfully ours. Finally, after so much time, we'll finally lay low the rest of the traitors that oppose us in the old world. The crowd again roared their approval. Raymond nodded his head in agreement. For too long, much too long, the Japanese cowards have exploited the people of Asia. For decades, they worked the blood of the nationalists while spitting us, spiting us. Us, even though without us there would be no Japanese Empire. The crowd, the cowards have sat in the corner of the world for long enough. It is time to bring the, bring low the last of our so-called friends, though that they, those that thought they could get away with using the right and our peoples as a means to an end. The crowd went mad, and the din of so many in such a small area was deafening. Raymer stepped down, motioning for Gordon to take the stage for a moment. Tensions on the stage were whirring high. 
worryingly high as Afira glared at Rayma. But he stood up and walked to the microphone in a booming voice. The, the time for talking is over. Now is the time for action. Seek Heil, seek Heil, seek Heil. The flash shoots. For the first time in a long time, Fiora Hilman Goring was excited. After a tor torturously long week that had been dominated solely by political matters related to the newest of the Reich's occupational regimes, Goring had managed to get one blessed night to himself. How to spend it had never been in question. The Staatsoper uh, Germania had premiered a new run of Weber's Der Freischutz, and the Fuhrer was determined to attend the show come hell or high water. Why, even if Schoner were to barge in and announce that they had entered into war with America and Japan, Goring would not be dissuaded. He needed this as a man in a desert needs water. Bundled up in layers for disguise and accompanied only by the most discreet and trusted of his personal god, the man who ruled all over all of Europe and much of Asia and Africa did not look the pot. He was careful to avoid the gazes of any of the other opera goers. Even as all with all of his efforts to disguise, he was still the most known man in the Reich, if not the world. After a few stressful encounters necessary to procure a seat, Gorgon was finally able to take a place in the most prestigious of the viewing boxes. Now that all was left to relax and immerse himself in the show, this that was his plan at any rate, but it was not destined to be. The performance, as expected by the renowned theater, was as terrific as Goring could ever remember it being. Its quality was not what haunted his mind as the lines of Oh Dieser Zorn ran through his head. No, it was a dawning realization of the part of the Führer that he, for all of his power and prestige, was in no better situation than young Max. Those Don Militus, Shona, Reimer, and the rest, they were the demonic Zamil, were given him the magic bullets that had granted him such success. When, the thought flashed into his mind, would it come for the seventh bullet to be fired, and what would be its terrible price? He shuddered suddenly as unbited images of hellfire and death presented themselves to him in an unescapable montage of doom. The magic of the night was gone, and the Fuhrer collapsed into a deep sense of fear as he heard the chorus out of the line that had always been able to move him before, but now in a quite a different sense. Ist unser und unser der Sieg, unser der Sieg, unser der Sieg. Strange bedfellows, new decisions to contact various resistance groups that, st that still may be operating within Burgundy. I want to do both, man. This seems like a lot of fun. Deploy the Abwehr. Yeah, let's do that one. Burgundy is considered an impenetrable fortress state, and no small part due to the frightening prowess of the agents, many of whom were trained by the one of Reich's top wartime operatives, Otto Skorzeny. We won't be able to do real damage until we put a dent into the army of spies that will be waiting for us in Os Paris. Galen has assembled his best men to undergo these high-risk, high-reward missions that will, with any luck, put us one step closer to Ansig against these black dogs. Oh man, the game's getting kind of... Oh my goodness, it's getting very laggy. I mean, we're near the end game now, but like, bruh, it's getting laggy, 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 laggerinos. Oh, we can't even invest infrastructure into Italy? I mean, yeah, the Balkans we can, but that makes no sense to me, man. There are puppet. We should be able to invest if we so choose to do so, so. It's fine. Whatever. But it is what it is. Greece. Actually, is it? Oh, yeah, Klein Azin. Yeah, I don't understand why. Where well, there's so much resistance there. It's still a little buggy. The mod's still a buggy. Either Goring's Wild Ride or, uh,. Just TNO in general. TNO in general is just a little buggy. Because there's so much in here. Cool. Can you make yourself hoping to take out the rest of the world? If not, I think someone did leave a comment saying that like we will have to manage to go to war with everybody else. So, we'll see what happens. If I have to, then so be it. We'll probably do that in the next episode, but we'll see. Like, the rest of eight, Africa? I mean, like... Some states should just not exist. Cool. Look at all the stuff we got a bit up. I I want to say we're not gonna we're, we will never run out of things to build, but I've been wrong before about that, so we'll see. Look at all the resources Russia has, especially Siberia. Oh my goodness. Nice. Yeah, more division is nice. Good. Preparing the blow, of course. And let's keep going. What do we have over here? All right, not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Follow it up with deploy the outbound, and we will continue with match their spies. We have, we were to get at all the upper hand in this, we must be able to match our spies. As the so-called Southern War begins to take shape between us and their foes in the SS, we should consider how we can act more tactically and to deploy our agents in the field. Losing too many will mean an effective concession to Burgundy and a loss in the game of chess, but also allow us to cool tension somewhat in our group. On the other hand, we can begin to deploy more agents, but this may end up doing little more than causing more of an unwanted commotion that will cause the Burgundians to catch on to our plans. Either way, Galen will honor the wishes of the Big Daddy, should you choose to accept him. 
Galen sat at his desk, observing the map of Burgundy. It was the best one they had yet, and it was three years out of date. Any number of these settlements could be now military encampments or research facilities or just gone. He promised the Big Daddy results, though, and he would get the results. Even now, his agents, his agents were attempting to infiltrate Burgundy from all angles. Divers disembarked from submarines. Parachutists performed halo jumps. Mountaineers attempting the perilous climb down the ships in secrecy. He estimated at least two-thirds of them would be dead by tomorrow. Leadership is about how to make the correct sacrifices, though. He would sacrifice a thousand lives for a chance of bringing down Burgundy for every one spared brought a piece of information that might save countless lives. The Alvair would crack this country even if he had a pile of corpses to climb over the border fence himself. Send in the next wave and blow for blow. We begin to place our operatives in key positions to begin killing off Burgundy's spies one by one. Such operations will no doubt be quite dangerous as these spies are well trained and always on the guard but we will, all we need is one moment where they relax and a second where they will stop their uh, pantopic watch. In that moment we will strike without hesitation because the longer we await the greater the chance of our discovery and termination. We are on the cusp of breaking the near mythic information supremacy of Burgundy. Now is the time to press home on all fronts. Absolutely. We must be able to match their own spies. At this point, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Agency, please. Please work. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, keep increasing our, the amount of information we have on them. That would be key to, um, of success, to success here. Good in there. There you go. Nice. Any, actually, do we have anything else here? Like, can we do some um, operational stuff? Where is this? That's Brittany. Burgundy. Uh, or do we prepare some stuff? Let's try this. I almost know to do this in TNO, so... Uh, infiltration linguist, infiltration risk, yes. Infiltration risk, yes. Email. There. Good. Alright, well, I guess we'll see what happens, you know. They might end up dying, but that's okay with us. Map out the silos. Currently, the greatest obstacle to detecting and intercepting, never mind countering any of Burgundy's silos or nuke nukes, is the fast the fact that we simply do not know where any of them are. That will need to be rectified and quickly at that, or we could end up winding up all engulfed in nuclear hackfire when Rainbow gives the order to march in guns blazing. The order shot has used its hidden nukes as a deterring trump card for years now, and we need to deprive them of this asset before we head to war. The Lufthansa has made several of the most high-tech spy planes available for the task of finding and mapping out where these missile silos have been stationed. Once we know where they are, we can tell our bombers where to target and program our defenses to intercept them, and the regrettable event of nuclear launch blind their eyes. As the day for open combat operations against Burgundy ever draws closer, Galen has drawn up proposals to hit Burgundy's intelligence gathering stations that will be able to warn of them warn them of troop deployments and build up ahead of our invasion. Crippling their ability to watch our movements will go a long way in giving us the initial and decisive edge in the fast approaching battle. This is not an easy mission, although the same could be said for the all field operations in that darn nation. But hopefully it'll be the last before we can dispense with the shadow plots and do what we do best, destroy our enemies. To the agents about to embark upon this most critical of missions, the fear has only this to say, see Kyle. We must blind the Burgundians. We can allow them to see what we are doing. We get the empty inside. And we're going to do both sides here. I want to do as much as we possibly can before we go to war with them because it's probably going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty darn hard to actually kill them off without them launching all sorts of nukes. But we shall see, my friends, because we do a strange bed, strange bedfellows. Dire times, they say, can make strange bedfellows of us all and further the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We have played our own very substantial part in destroying the vestiges of resistance within France when we held total control of the region. But now that we face the only foe to deal more damage to their freedom than we have, perhaps they would be willing to overlook our past actions in favor of a temporary alliance. It will be one of the strangest occurrences in a century full of them. But such is our circumstances that it is at least worth looking into. We cannot guarantee success, but still, just to be safe, we'll have Galen assess the state of the resistance movements within the Oldenstadt, reconnaissance over the Black State. He shouldn't have been terrified as he was. Matthias had flown so many sorties in inspired planes, and even more in combat missions during the First West, West Russian War. This was just another routine surveillance mission. He was so close to the German border as well. It wasn't supposed to be terrifying, but he couldn't shake the fear of being tasked with taking photos of Burgundy's nuclear silos. He dreaded hearing the locked-on locked sounds. He dreaded having having to have bail, maybe. Most of all, Matthias dreaded the inevitable endless interrogation should he ever get captured. Luckily, the images were finally coming in. He could see the Burgundy nuclear silos, and there was far, far more than he expected. Surely it was a bluff. There was no concern conceivable way. This is Matthias to command. You have got to see this. You have got to, got to, got to see this. Oh, look at this. I'll blind their eyes, of course, which is good to do. And then, strange new battles. Uh, the Burgundian spy level is all seeing. Our spy level is extensive. Burgundy's alertness to our operations is currently unaware. Our covert level is currently something. We're currently in a stalemate in Silent War. We will be able to win the Silent War if we're able to maintain a higher spy level than Burgundy. We also must be careful not to raise Burgundy's suspicions too high or they will preemptively strike us. Our covert level determines our operative's ability to operate in secret and keeping it high will unlock more options for our agents. Kill a Burgundian spy. Burgundian spy killed a humiliating switch to room. Deploy more spies. Ooh, is that... Oh, that's low now. Okay. Pro the Burgundian defenses. Starts a border war between us and Freigrafschaft. 
Um, honestly, we should be able to win regardless, but still. No matter what. How strong are their APCs? They're not that strong. Okay. I want to risk this. Can we actually win here, maybe? No, maybe not. Are we, are, how are we losing? What? What? Is this level 10? No, it's Mountain Zoe. What? How? What happened to our tanks? Where's our organization? Oh! Seriously. Can they pierce us? We have intel advantage. I mean, it's mountains, I get, but still. Feels like we only go backwards. What the hell was that? Oh my goodness! I've never had that happen before. That, the, wow. that makes no sense to me, man. What? Why are you eating Kaba with? There's so much. There's. I don't know at this point. I, I don't know if I can really recommend anyone playing Goring. This just doesn't make sense. A lot of this just, just makes no sense to me, man. It feels like we only go backwards. For this past six days, he and Jonas have been struck in the stinking, stinking muddy hole. The only new con errant had been a grenade, frantically hauled back by his comrade in the 11th hour. The noise had been unrelenting, and they had long since run out of ammo with which to return fire. The previous minute they had been confused. The absence of noise seemed deafening. Peter had been so desperate that he volunteered to peek out, resigned to his fate. The German guns had fallen silent, and the haze had covered the blackened no-man's-land mud of scorched earth cleared. Peter's view was unobstructed, revealed in the spots of pla pitch black that spotted the muddy brown. The brigands were advancing. Join us, we gotta run. He stared up at him in terror, but Peter grabbed him under the shoulder and hauled him up. The blessed silence was broken once more with the sound of gunfire. Behind the lines, reports were confirmed, while Burgundian troops maintained the border. The Reich's forces had been defeated, pushed back into flight. This was a dreaded defeat, another check mark on Himmler's apparently unblemished record. Germany shrinks back into fear. Like, I get that they have, um, uh, like, Spartanic, like, discipline and such, but still, still, that's, that's not the end-all be-all for military stuff. Training, advanced training methods, no rich integration, exemplary draft... Uh, where is it? Social laws, security laws. Uh, is it? Is that? We're on Spartan Discipline too, so like. That literally made no sense. Yeah, I don't know. This seems very. This mod. I, it just. The more I play it, the more I see like potential bugs or anything like that, that I just get disappointed in it. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to be negative, like I said earlier, but like. <laughs> it ain't ready for prime time. The enemy inside, though. Though it is an open secret, we are still very well aware Burgundy has an extensive spy network in our nation. Made up of SS sympathizers, ex S men, and specialists that have infiltrated from Burgundy itself. Hitler has many eyes and ears all throughout the Reich. The Avvir have been working on cracking these hidden cells and believe they may have a lead. If they manage to find something solid and trace the breadcrumb trail, we may be able to expose most of Hitler's informants. Of course, failure is a possibility. If the spy network discovers that we're onto them, they may go deeper underground or even act against the agents attempting to smoke them out. Still, the Avvir is confident they can expose the rats. It's time to lay out some rat poison. We're gonna fail again. What? Um, it just seems like we're forced to fail. Like, I don't like this. I really don't like that we're forced to fail. Please don't force us to fail. Give us an actual fighting chance, man. They're not that strong. A humbling failure, of course. Our attempt to smoke up the SS agents looking underground in our nations already failed miserably. Perhaps their spy network is more elaborate than we thought. Or men simply made too much noise. Whatever happened, their agents have gone dark. It just isn't the SS men who have gone missing. Several of the men working leads on this operation have mysteriously gone missing. We only one report of one of the men being kidnapped out of his house at night in Essen. We manage in the other dozen men we have met similar fates and are likely dead already. To make matters worse, him or himself will have gotten word that we are focusing efforts on curbing SS influence, which will more than likely raise tensions between us. Even our own borders, we can't beat them. I know they're supposed to be the, like, you know, the black state of Europe, but like, still, bro, come on. Honestly, like, you know, it's a bit extreme of stuff, but like, <laughs> holding this all together with a very, like, literally getting no men from us anymore, like, seems a bit extreme, but, oh well. It, we have for a good time. Not a long time, but for a good time. It's fine, get some more chromium. Yay! Strange bedfellows meeting in the night. Following the assessment, we had carried on the state of the French and Belgian resistances. Fuhrer Goring has given Herr Galen permission to conduct reach out missions known as resistance to known resistance contacts that survived up until now. We understand that these groups likely have been whittled down by years of persecution and lack of morale, but it could also be true that the Burgundians have driven an increased amounts of French and Burgundian French and Belgian men and women to fight for the survival underground. On another note, Herr Galen has also put forward the prospect of entering into communication with members of the foreign SS divisions that make up the core of Burgundian Burgundy's forces. At the same time, he's cautioned that this presents a significant danger and that exposing ourselves this early on could disrupt our entire campaign before it even begins. Needless to say, the Fuhrer will be carefully considering all options. 
on the state of the Burgundian resistance movements. Records regarding possible dissident elements within the Burgundian Oldenstadt. Obviously, the SS was never going to share their weaknesses, their own weaknesses, given what they seem to have been planning for years now. The Oldenstadt is considered an impenetrable secret state for a reason. Even at the height of our power, we were never able to maintain the level of communications blackout that they had achieved. To me, this does not bode well for the finding of any active resistance cells, of course. Hard to find does not mean non existent, and the Abbe will search every nook and cranny in order to further the goals of the Reich. We have two leads currently in the French and Belgian context, but we need a further time to verify their authenticity, lest we fall into a beginning counterintelligence. As for potential informants within the regime, we do know at least the names of some, but the list is far from the Burger Creek, and given the high rate of turnover amongst the Burgundian officials, coupled with possible changes in willingness to cooperate, we cannot heavily rely on this information. We have agents in the field conducting check ins on the nations on the names to confirm or not the status of these potential assets. As of this report, only redacted has been located and been confirmed as deceased since 1965 during one of the apparently infamous purges carried out by the Reichsführer SS Himmler's direct orders. Our best guess is that redacted and redacted have also been terminated in the meanwhile, but this cannot be confirmed at this moment. As always, my fear, you'll be updated when any new info has been discovered. General Major Reinhard Galen, Abia. At least it's something. SS R. Uh, Ospreisen. This week, Arthur Len Dighton publishes his newest novel, SSR Osporsen. The novel takes place in an alternate history where Mikhail Tukhachevsky launches a coup against Bukharin in the late 20s, transforming the Soviet Union into a military state comparable to Napoleon's France. The new Bonaparte, as he styled, launches numerous invasions of Eastern Europe and Scandinavia at the time when the rest of the world is still reeling from the Great Depression and unable to respond, significantly strengthening the Soviet's position. Hitler's Germany finds much a tougher opponent in this union, and the war between the two lasts for many years, until both sides are forced to peace, after each discovers atomic bombs simultaneously, and the cities of Königsberg and Kiev are annihilated. The story focuses on a commissar in the Red Army, who has been assigned to oversee the reconstruction of the Soviet-held Königsberg, now recrudescent Stalingrad. After a close ally of Stukhachevsky, upon discovering the murder of a prominent government official, the commissar finds himself abroad in a Byzantine web of plots involving the Soviet High Command, the local garrison, and partisans from the heavily oppressed and radiation-scarred German inhabitants of the city. Hints are laid throughout the story of greater going-ons beyond the scenes, such as massive instability in German-controlled Western Europe and extensive Soviet military campaigns in northern Iran and western China. The story ends with the commissar narrowly escaping death at the hands of his superiors and uncovering a plot to provoke the Reich into new war. The book has been has drawn praise for its unique take on the noir genre, and its gritty setting amidst the burned out streets of Stalingrad. Some have criticized it for its somewhat sympathetic portrayal of the German characters, with a few even going as far as to suggest that Dighton may possess Nazi ideals. Regardless, it has already had a quite successful first run of sales and expected to become a staple of alternate history for years to come. Interesting t an interesting tale, but it's all fantasy, of course. Happy 1974, everyone. It's definitely a year. So, how do they have this? How do they have a million? How do they have a million manpower? Like honestly, how do they have a million manpower? Are they? Are, what are the conscription are they at? What, what are they at? Mass mechanization research facilities, basic literacy. Um, they have an extreme amount of poverty. One party state, of course, state religion, nearly religious, closed borders, allowed slavery. Uh, what else they got? They have uh, all the public meetings, state press only, no voting, refugees banned, service by requirement, uh, which does help them out. But I'm surprised that that's not any higher actually. Kill them all. I guess they probably court a lot of the states here. Probably. I mean, that's the only way I could really see them doing well. That's not bad for them as well. Segregated regiments is okay for them. No draft exemptions. Closed economy. Total mobilization. High taxes makes sense. Flat taxes. High flat taxes. Uh, what else do they have? No minimum wage. Unlimited work day. Legal child labor. No pensions. No health care either, which really, really hurts them. Public education. Penal slavery. Outlawed stuff. Traditional roles. State, of, state oppression is always nice, right? State oppression. Preemptive security, of course. So that really does help them out as well. No construction. Oh, look at these guys. Um, I'm sure they got quite a few good uh, national spirits too. Meeting the night. Well, let's prepare for sabotage. Making new friends is all well and good, but it'll only get us a far. Battles and wars are not won with promises and meeting, but with destruction and sabotage of the enemy. While some field agents are running around Paris looking for a PR, that freedom fighter, others will be heading to more solid targets. Railroad junctions, air control towers, supply depots, even barracks will be targeted for covert destruction. Oh, to be a fly on the wall when Himmler, that obsessively intricate freak, discovers all his plans have gone awry as his entire country explodes around him. The fear would dearly love to see such a sight in person at least once. Perhaps once Himmler lies ready for the execution, Goring will be able to have his fun. Yeah, I'm sorry, man, but like, those divisions are nowhere near as strong as ours. They're literally nowhere near as strong as our divisions, so. Like, 40 combat say I get that our tanks are kind of weak. But like, bro, 18 combat width can stand up to us. And it was over mountain, or oh, into a mountain, but still. But still, bro, bro. What else do we have here? Try to contact the Belgians. Yeah, sure, why not? We can try that one. Medium. Uh, contact disloyal Burgundians. Examine the foreign SS for cracks. We must take a deep look into this foreign SS and search for any possible cracks. Let's do that one. Pull our eight spies back. Kill a Burgundian spy. Um, we don't want their, them to be too high here, so. Information overhaul. 
Well, that's not bad. That'd be good to get it. Just as they just uh, throw up chaff to avoid missiles, so we'll throw up so much information into out in the wind that the Burgundians will have no way to know about our true intentions. In the world of air combat, a topic on which the Führer has kept himself remarkably well informed upon, even as his most other interests slip away, there's the concept of chaff. Chaff is a type of divisionary tactic, where a cloud of material is released to confuse radar and other detection systems to overload them with false positives. In the Führer's opinion, the method Spymaster Galen has proposed to overwork the Ordenschutz intelligence services seems quite similar to this modern tool of the skies. By keeping their agents too busy through fake operations and the like, our real endeavors will no doubt see far greater success in the field. Into the belly of the beast, directive number 1418, General Major Reinhard Galen. Uh, double check anything else here for a quick cool. Pursuant to Fuero Director 237, see attached document. The Abwehr will begin conducting covert operations against the so called foreign SS divisions of the former Ordenschaft Burgund. Target groups include SS Division Charlemagne, Walloon, and Langemark. See attached Appendix A. These missions are to be conducted in service to the Schwarzschwarz, currently underway, and are meant to slow division in the ranks of anticipated enemy combatants once combat operations begin. Propaganda is to be seeded amongst the rank and file of the units to drop their operational capabilities below efficient levels. This directive is eyes only classified to be distributed to operational chiefs. Disclosure of these operations is punishable by death in accordance with the Fear Directive 238. See attached on infractions of secrecy regarding fall Schwarz covert operations. Out by the skin of their teeth. Dissolved in the stomach's acids. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Let's save real quick. I want us to do well here. Like, I get it. It's, it's like a really secret to save. How many divisions do they have, actually? How many divisions do they have? They don't look like they have enough divisions to cover their entire border with us. A million manpower, of course. 23. Yeah, I'll be honest. That's that's, that's, that's stupid. They, they should not be able to beat us. Hopefully we can do well here, though. Oh, that's not good. It's significant. Dissolved in the stomach's acids. Uh, I regret to inform the fear that the recent operations to cause dissent and confusion within the ranks of the foreign SS divisions within the Ordenschaft Bergen were forced to be called off this morning. After two unsuccessful infiltration attempts resulting in no detection and extraction, a third attempt was made that was detected and subsequently emergency aborted. The SD did not capture the deployed agent, one Hauptmann Friedrich Strom, who committed in an undisclosed area of the Audin Force to avoid capture and interrogation. I understand this is regrettable and will strive to ensure that such a failure does not occur in the future. Hal Goring. Darn it, Galen, can you bring me no good news? We'll see if we can bring some good, good news. Alright, everyone, so I tried doing this several different times, examine the foreign SS for cracks, but then nothing really happened, so, um, I'm gonna try to contact disloyal Burgundians, maybe? We'll see what happens with that one. If it goes well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, but let's see what happens with this one. Kill a Burgundian spy, we'll see what happens, but every part of me says go ahead. Page is dead in incredulity. They've turned around. For the past six days, he and George have been stuck in a stinking muddy hole. The only one entrant had been a grenade, frantically held back by his comrades. Um, in the 11th hour, of course. The noise had been unrelenting, and they had long since run out of ammo with which to return fire. The previous minute, they had been confused, the absence of noise seemed deafening. Peter had been so desperate that he volunteered to speak out, resigned to his fate, which, this is exactly what I read earlier, though. Um, let's see. The Burgundian troops that had seemed so menacing with their unrelenting firing and constant artillery cover were moving backwards. While the distant boom of heavy guns was still there, the constant typewriter drill sound of small arms had disappeared. All that remained was a black and no man's land of mud and scorched earth. Behind the lines, the reports were confirmed, and a sigh of relief was breathed throughout Germany. This defeat was a crack in the army they needed, proof that Burgundy was in the indestructible monolith they had feared. And on the front line, the troops moved back, relieved that they would live another day. Looks like Himmler's dogs aren't so tough after all. Wait, what? How does that. Um. I did not, we didn't get another option to like raid him again, but okay, sure, well, you know what, can I just get rid of this? Here, just do both, maybe we'll get rid of that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. I don't want to see that anymore, so. Yeah, I don't know, we're doing, prepare for sabotage though. Hopefully we do okay. Uh, and I guess, learn their secrets, yes. So far, opera has been forced to warily skirt around any sense of Burgundian operations, unless they be detected or killed, and worse, or worse. However, we were able to acquire Burgundian codebooks and crack them. Then we would be able to see all their moves ahead of time and could then plan more efficiently around them to a point where we would hardly have to worry about the detection, needless to say. Securing Burgundian codebooks is no easy task, and should we be discovered, the consequences could be severe indeed. Goring, or Galen, will of course be, will defer to Fuhrer Goring on the matter, but he seems to believe the invaluable insight we stand to gain may be worth the tremendous risk. Absolute nuclear coverage. As the first nation with nuclear power we have come up with in our come up with against in a conquest, we must be prepared to face some uncomfortable realities. Nuclear codes may be unavoidable, and we may not be able to intercept all targets sent our way. Does that mean we are to simply give up and let the traitors breathe easy, however? Of course not. Even if a few nukes made it pass our guard, we can still carry on, and we must make sure that the Burgundians understand that if they hit us with one nuke, we will hit them with five to match. The Führer has ordered an emergency massive silo build up along the border that will allow us, should it come to it, to cover every inch of Burgundy and nuclear radiation within an hour. They believe that alone that they alone hold the power of the atom as a trump card they've been greatly mistaken we should be prepared to blanket all of burgundy with nuclear fire cool 
Look at all that. More intercontinental ballistic missiles. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anything else here? Because their uh, alertness is somewhere here. Uh, examine for SS for spies. Sabotage. We should attempt a small scale sabotage effort. Cracking the Enigma. With the Burgundian administration in chaos, the Alvair decided that now is the time to crack the secret codes the SS used for all vital communications. Normally, we would just outright shoot down this kind of plan. It's not just reckless, it's a borders of madness. However, the Alvair is confident that they can get the job done. With the SS in chaos at home, they argue that there's no better time than now than to launch an undercover operation to steal code books. Th they may very well be right. There may not be another window of opportunity like this. Still, is it worth taking the risks? If they think they can do it, then we must have faith in our men. Which means, I'm going to save, even though these percent chance these chances, these percentage chances are very low. I think they're actually more rigged to be even worse for us, so I doubt we'll win. Because I don't want them to get too high here, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I just don't want to fail too much, you know. Not too much. It's... Uh, of course, it's been failed. Of course. All seemed to be going as planned. Our Albert agents infiltrated one of the SS's command posts in Paris as planned. Our men walked right through the security checkpoints with no issues. Our men made it inside again, no problems. The issue was that they never came out. About a day after our men were last seen, nearly all of our safe houses in Burgundy were raided. Most of our agents were compromised in the crackdown. It's safe to say that the operation went horribly wrong. Our men probably got captured, then likely were horribly tortured to death, but not before they gave up sensitive information if the raids are anything to go by. We all knew the risks, and now have to deal with the consequences. The SS luckily know that it was without a doubt us who have been sabotaging the back lines. Tensions are without a doubt going to rise, and it remains to be seen if they will boil over or not. They got too ambitious for own good. Yeah, that's not my fault. Like, seriously. I don't like this. I don't like the whole, like, oh, we're just trying to do the best and we can't do anything. We can't do jack squat. Pfft, come on, man. Come on. I know we're bloated and stuff, but is there a turn to feel the dark? I don't know why we would do this, because look at that. We lose 5% weekly war sport. Who in the right mind would do that? That doesn't make any sense. A swift end to the madness, though. Given Burgundy's nuclear capability that we are, ad admittedly, largely in the dark about, the High Command is in useful universal agreement that a quick and decisive, decisive blow must be conducted to knock out the Orden Stop before it has a chance to use its nuclear capabilities. We will be focusing on preparing multiple avenues of attack that will hopefully catch the SS off guard and overwhelmed regardless of their preparation. Our various neighboring Excommissariats will have major parts to play to play, to be used as launching grounds and multiple lines of advantage, or advance. By the time Herr Himmler even knows what's going on, we'll be in Os Paris. Yeah, honestly, we should be. We literally should be. They're not that strong, but the game, I think, is designed to be like, they're extremely, extremely, extremely strong, so we'll see. GWRI? Yeah, I'm tired of seeing that one. I keep trying to choose corruption, but just, it's always there, I guess. Swift Under the Madness, ready to have. Two decades ago, our armies marched and drove across Eurasia, conquering all in their path. It was a feat of arms unparalleled in history, and some said it could never be matched again. Well, we have proven the ones that who said that wrong, haven't we? In only a few short years, we have matched them, matched and then exceeded the success of our first conquest, bringing all but the three greatest powers in the spheres under our control. Our men are grizzled veterans of dozens of campaigns now, and could give Caesar's legions a run for their money. In preparation for Fall Schwartz, Kfeo Goring is written to Field Marshal Shornov, asking for a comprehensive analysis of the hair. It will no doubt show the peerless heights to which they have risen. Ready the Lufafa. As the Lufafa, the apple of Hermann Goring's eye, the number of those who can personally attest to the fact that it began to dwindle in recent years, but all school children in the Reich are taught that Fjord Goring was once a top fighter ace in the First World War. While he's not taken to the sky prepared for a scrap in quite some time, the former ace and head of the air fleet will lead the Reich to victory in the skies which, and will always be treasure the men, and will always treasure the men who slept the moorings of gravity and slept, fly like mythical dragons, breathing fire and death to the enemies of the Vatalam. Goring eagerly waits a sit rep on the Lufafa's battle readiness. This is literally the, camp the longest campaign I've ever had in TNO so far. Oh boy. Maybe, except for when I played as Burgundy, maybe? But even then, that was, that was a buggy mess. Burgundy near the end is really, really buggy and doesn't just doesn't make sense and things just don't collide well, do stuff well, so. Rally the Rx Commissariats. Because I do want to do all these focuses before we go to war with them, so kicking down the door would be nice. But ready the Luftwaffe. Oh, yeah, four days left, that's not bad. Uh, I'll do equipment, more ships, which I obviously, as you know, haven't touched very much at all, but it is what it is. Ah, come on, come on. And one more day. Report of status of the hair. Ready the Creek's Marine. I uh, hope we'll have the status support soon. It's hard to imagine now, but it was only a few decades ago when our navy was considered second rate at best and a joke at worst. We lost multiple ships in the invasion of Norway and Italy alone, and even lost our advanced battleship Bismarck to the American dogs. Things have changed greatly since those days, however, and while the Kriegsmarine may not have been a top priority of the Reich, our fleet has served us admirably these past few years in our conquest of the British Isles, of Scandinavia, of Italy, Iberia, and Turkey. Yes, our sailors have likely gained more combat experience in the past five years than in the entire nation of the Kriegsmarine. A report on the status of the fleet is being finalized even now, and will be on the Führer's desk for a review within a few days. Ready the hair. 
status of the Hea, my Fuero. The Hea is on the best ship it has ever been. It is overall the best trained and most well motivated army by far in the world. Although a hardened and veteran force, our army is, to put it plainly, stretched thin. Garrisons from the steppes of uh, Middle Eastern holdings have, for the most part, the bare minimum of men to occupy our lands. Our manpower reserves are beginning to run low. A war of attrition fought by our forces would at this point be incredibly costly and likely not sustainable. Alternate means of raising up men should be considered if we were to continue to expand the Reich, drawing natives from our Iraqi commissariats to throw into the worst battlefields, or garrisoning them in regions with heavy partisan activity would be prudent. Our army is the best. But do we have enough men for the future campaigns? That truly is the question. Which we do. I mean, I've been very kind of... Uh, I've closely monitored how much manpower we had, and just try not to kill off too many of our own men. We actually have 207 million people in our population, huh? Not including our Rex Commissariat, of course, but still. Nice, there you go. Five ships? That's not enough. Alright, and... Not bad. Keep getting some more armor for those guys. Those big old fuddy duddies. And after this one, then you'll do some more of this as well. Because you get more soft attack, art attack, piercing, and stuff like that. That'd be good. Ready, Lufafa. Mind Fuhrer, you'll be pleased to learn that the Lufafa is in a fantastic fighting form. Although, there are minor local jet plane shortages across our holdings. All in all, we have... One of, not if, the largest air forces in the world. Our technology is stopped here, which is reflected in the quality of our planes. Our ballistic missile stockpiles have also managed nicely. We have over a thousand warheads currently pointed at the rogue state uh, to our west. All in all, when con concentrated, the Luftwaffe is second to none in the skies. Your faithful servant, Johannes Steinhoff, General der Flagge. Fjord Goring will be pleased to hear that. An iron curtain. Our large border of the Odenstadt works w uh, as an advantage to us, allowing us to strike from multiple positions at once and overwhelm their crack troops with our superior numbers. However, this fact also works against us in one way. Should the Burgundians choose to preemptively attack us before we're truly prepared, our lands could be broken. To remedy this, Fjord Goring has demanded the Reich's engineers to submit plans for possible defensive lines to prevent this possibility. We could fortify the entire sneaking border across our core territory, and that our Reich's commissariats, but the cost of the project will increase in proportion to the coverage still. In the long run, we will be able to plunder the entire world, and what will a few million mocks matter then? A wall of unbreakable iron between ourselves and the Burgundian menace. The cost of this project will depend on how much ex how extensive we wish this fortress line to be. Cool. Ready, people. With the continuous state of war over the past several years, there are some within the fear circle who fear that German people may be growing exhausted of the constant war, the possibility of never seeing their sons, fathers, and husbands, the possibility that they may be bombed or even attacked by nuclear weapons should the Reich run into something with as big a bite as they have. The Fuhrer, and more importantly, Field Marshal Schoenau and General Raymond will have none of that, however. And a new propaganda campaign meant to ready the book for a war against the SS traitors has been established. They will learn just what the madman Hitler would do to them should he be allowed to succeed or even survive. They must be reminded that this is no longer the Henrik Himmler of Hitler's day day, who stood by the Fuhrer, but a snake in the grass who was, already, who was always waiting for the death of his supposed friend to make his moves. Ready the Kriegsmarine. Navy rebuilding and retooling is continuing as planned. Progress is not spectacular, but our navy has more or less recovered from the many defections and losses of the Civil War. Although certainly formidable, and more than a match for any of our immediate neighbors, the American and Japanese navies could prove to be troublesome still. Our submarine forces are not to be underestimated. We are more than capable of projecting power into the world's oceans from below. Our major bases at Kiel, Plymouth, Gibraltar, and Vladivostok continue to harbor, build, and train our naval forces, even though we don't own Vladivostok, I think. Gross Admiral Karl Jesko von Putkammer. So perhaps not the best, but formidable in all the same. Not bad. Oh wow, that's, that's going to be a while. Uh, we're actually building a lot more roads now, which is not bad. How? Oh, we got plenty of radar for now. Plenty of radar. We built up enough of this too, which is good. Good, good. Build up some more roads. Just in case we need to extract some more resources. We started to take out Andorra. Like, I don't understand why we can't take out everyone else yet. I mean, I guess, yeah, we got to take out Burgundy and America and the Japanese. But, like, there's a lot of small little places. So let me know in the comments below. If you're still watching, once again, thank you. But, uh, should we just use console commands to take everyone else out? Like, I'm not sure if we can or not. If there's another war plan for that. I kind of doubt it. So, why would we take out America when we... Why would we not take out Andorra when we take out America or something like that? So, so we're done with that stuff. That's kind of nice. Except for this thing. It's got helicopters, but that's okay. Oh, actually... Yeah. Advanced attack at least. I should have gotten that one a lot earlier. Very low, very low. Absolute. Nice. 100%. Very good. Very, very good. Six days left. Not bad. Uh, are you guys done really training? Are you guys really done training? How about you guys? The choppers look really good, though. You guys looking not as good, but how's the deficit? That's actually looking a lot better than what it used to be. An iron curtain? Yes, yes, yes. Goring's eyes were rimmed with the dark lines of fatigue and sunk, sunk him. Corner's eyes surveyed the room within the fear bunker where he'd moved to following his internal announcement commencing of War Plan C. There was an empty wine bottle there at the side of the desk, a vintage old enough that Corner was shocked when it wasn't in the cellars of Karn Hall. That was something you were supposed to drink for the p pity's sake. That was something you weren't just. Yes. That was something you were supposed to drink just 
from for a pity's sake. What was going on with the Fuhrer? His old friend had gone clean years ago and yet something had shaken that. Kona shuddered, afraid of what the answer was, but back to the matter at hand. He had been called here to talk about fortifications, and so on. Fortifications he would be focusing his thoughts on. He quickly rescanned the proposal he had been brusquely handed as he had come in. That was quite a bit of resources the Furyo wanted shifted, and in such a short amount of time. Kona looked into his old comrade's eyes. Herman, what exactly are these for? I thought the plan was to push into Burgundy, no? Goran grimaced like a man in deep pain. For a moment he remained utterly silent, and Kona felt the hair on his back of his neck stand on the end. Then, with a furtive look around him, to, as if to check to see if the two men were truly alone, the Fuhrer bent him. His voice low and quiet, he began to speak. Rayma has been heading up the invasion, and you know he is even less interested in my commands than Shona is, in fact. He doesn't even seem interested in listening to the field marshal anymore, either. Says I'm right, but I can't guarantee what uh, will happen when the fighting begins. These forts will be our insurance policy, our backup and defense, if the army completely falls apart. Do you understand now? Corner nodded soberly. Soberly, I do, Hamin. That still leaves us with the question of where to establish this line. Extensions be done, make it reach down to Mittelmea. Extend the line all the way down to the Atlantic coast. Concentrate on the six feet line only. That one. Nice. We fight devils. Prepare to defend ourselves against a Burgundian menace. The men of the SS, now Himmler's personal army, are no mere soldiers. They are, in truth, not even the zealous enforcers of national socialism we once knew them as. No. They become a legion of demons, men willing to commit acts so despicable that they defy the bounds of any, even normal wartime morality. They will give us no quarter, and we must be prepared to respond in kind. They are far too gone by this point. There is no point in attempting to save this diseased wreck of an organization. They have decided that they would follow their Lucifer out of heaven and down to heck. They do not see us as true Germans. The madness has utterly corrupted them. Well, if our men are called on to fight the devil's own soldiers, they will do so as quickly as they would any other foe. But Kempfen! And we will follow the fear. Nice. Push our troops to the limits and force march entire armies if we have to victory. In all the many conquests, Fear Goring has led us in, his, in since his ascension. He has never led us into failure. He was always a devoted servant of the Reich, and now he serves the people through his unmatched leadership. The soldiers all trust him with their lives, the nation with its victory. In a recent parade through Germania, the Fear has led the procession of some 6,000 soldiers, resplendent in his full military attire, displaying dozens of medals and honors that has earned through, through devotion to the Reich. At the end of the ceremonial march, the Fear stood in full view of the civil soldiers and was hailed with the thunderous adulation that only soldiers can give. Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil Goring, Heil der Freude. Cool. This is going to be one god-awful war against the Burgundians. I, I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, I'm not. Uh, Just like old times. Oh, boy. Um, into heck itself? Well, how about this side? Rally the Rex Commissariats. When we go into battle against the Black Sea of Burgundy, we will not be doing so alone. We will have the assistance of so many of our Rex Commissariats to supplement our forces and to draw the SS's attention away from remaining advances, of course. This burden will mostly fall to those Rex Commissariats aboard of Burgundy. This will include Rex Commissariat Bretanin, Rex Commissariat Ozitanin, and our Italian puppet. Each will be able to fulfill specific tasks that should help streamline our invasion. The Fira will be sending community keys to the generals who have been placed in charge of these regimes soon. She has a large border of the Burgundy that we can exploit. They will be proving to be a key pawn in the coming fight. That's not bad. That's actually really helpful. Oh, good. Um, yes. Nice. Not bad. Agent one factories get more, uh, you know, infrastructure. That'd be really good to get as well. So we'll see. There's still significant, so I don't want to do anything else here. Like everything we do, we just fail. So I don't want to do any more. So, uh, rally the Rocks out. Alert Ake Ozitanin. Uh, it is one of our newest, newer administrations, and we should therefore take the effort to stabilize them before dragging them into this next battle. General Heisinger is well aware of our plans and has been tasked with efficiently balancing his regime's internal security needs with supplying our invasion forces with his fair share. With such a significant land border with Burgundy, we cannot be certain that the SS will not attempt to counterattack and given the frail nature of such a young government, such an e such an even attack could prove disastrous. Forces drawn from the rear echelons of our army stationed in the more distant Rex Commissars will take their positions along the Ozitan Burgundian border as well. We wish to leave it as little to chance as possible. Our invasion must be all but assured when we take the leap, in which they give them 10,000 manpower, some support, war support and stability, which would be good, and infantry in Avon. Oh, oh, what is this? Free dockyards? Nice. Uh, battleships. I don't care how much it costs. We need battle. We need this.
While we will commit the mechanized and armored divisions of our army to the north of Burgundy to quickly race to the Osperus, we'll also be deploying our slower but more numerous infantry divisions in the south. The plan is for this tidal wave of land troops to sweep away any Burgundian resistance like a broom sweeping up dust, pushing the momentum so that any SS forces that survive are speared. In the north, will be swallowed by this devastating tide. This force will naturally be slower than its counterpart, but it hardly needs any extra equipment when the terrain will be incredibly easy to navigate in the center of the French lands. France has seen the devastation that mass infantry and artillery could cause decades ago, and we aim to replicate the feat against these traitors again. From the south, the Reich's finest will sweep the SS dogs away like so many flies. And like so many times. Not bad, not bad. Uh, a couple more days for that one. So they're going to get slightly more armor for these guys, which won't matter too much. But actually, that's, that's pretty good. 50% more armor. 20% more breakthrough is actually pretty darn strong. So actually, I really like that one. I wonder what Himmler's thinking right now. Like, when are they going to attack? Come on. We're not forever. So, I guess let's uh, divert their attention. Oh, we cannot have this and friends in the weirdest of places. Okay. Decrease the loyalty of the militarists. Okay, alert the ISR then. Cool. The Italian Social Republic. The ISR, as much of the old Italian Empire's military, is still intact. If a bit battered by our invasion, they border the Burgundians via the Alps, and for any other military, we would hesitate to even attempt such an assault. The Italians, however, more so than any other European nation, has experience in mountainous warfare dating back to their unification. Farinacci is our willing puppet, and we have no doubt he will jump at the chance to please us. Oh, I hope we do well here. Britannian Marines in Normandy immediately deploy a core of our best Marines in Rex Commissariat Britannian to prepare for a major naval invasion. That sounds actually really good to do. So we're going to give people guns as much as possible, including uh, Avon. Avon. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. Alert, Rex Commissariat Britannian. Rex Commissariat Britannian, a site of two triumphs and an incredibly important strategic location for our operations going forward. While most of the generals recognize it as an important staging ground for an eventual invasion of North America, some have astutely pointed out that we could also make it useful for our assault on the Oldenstadt indeed. The short crossing across the channel means we could quickly have Marines on the beaches of Normandy and Calais, and swarming down in the regional capital while Burgundy's forces are concentrated on the land borders. Goring will have a word with London about preparing adequate transports for such an operation. Nice, good. Look at all the ships we're making. Nice. This is all for America, man. All for America and Japan. Train. Um, at this point, we're going to need way, 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 way more ships or planes. Oh, we don't have enough cast a week. God dang it. Oh, do we have something here? Oh, completed. Nice. Nice. Um, anything else? Yes, yeah, so you guys come on back and continue to invade and spy on them. I, I apologize for this video being so long. I just want to make up for like the past couple days where I just haven't had longer videos. So, um, infantry, army, navy, air force, make resistance contacts, deal with blueprints, infantry. No. That's that's uh, infantry of the army. Why not? Good luck. You're going to need it. We might never see you again, but good luck. See Kyle. And boom, Marinos. Followed up with Marines in Normandy. We have formulated an acceptable plan of amphibious attack that utilizes our bases on Rex Commissariat Britannian as launch pads. On the orders of General Feld Marshal Schoner himself, a dedicated corps of soldiers with extra training and landing operations has been established and deployed to the Isles. The Sea Corps, as it has been dubbed by the General Staff, would normally not be terribly effective given its relatively small size. However, this unit is not intended to carry out the sing war single handedly. The main mission that will be presented to these brave warriors is this establish a foothold in the Normandy and Calais regions before advancing into two columns. Once to secure the coastal ports and the other to advance inland. Eventually, these columns will make contact with the rest of our forces, and we will have a massive pocket of the Burgundian forces ready to be liquidated. Hopefully, core deploy a core of our best marines. Best, best, best marines. Hopefully, not bad. It gets more uh, manpower for them, more war support, more stability. Because we got to make sure everyone's ready to go, all on the same page. I'm glad that, that the war ticker. No, the, the wartime is not affecting us right now, which is so nice. The last piece of Bur the Burgundians would expect us to come through would be the Alps. Throughout history, the crossing of mountains in warfare has been considered to carry far more risk than reward. While this is a fair statement, it neglects to account for the determination of the German spirit. It would shame all of Germany to be forced to say it cannot complete a task that a general of a far lesser race was able to accomplish centuries ago. The Gebrechtsjäger and Alpini divisions stand ready and, quite frankly, eager to attempt this colossal challenge. Entire divisions will be passing through and over multiple mountains on a timetable of only a few days. No simple thing, but if it can be done, we shall do it. Sieg Heil. Oh, wow. Look at all that stuff we got done. Uh, oh, even for the United States, we got done at the same time. That's kind of weird, but okay. Alert the Dutch Reichsgau. 
Nice. All right. Um, yeah, look at all this. Like, what, what, why do we not get stuff about just taking out Africa? Because it's probably all worthless and we don't really know what's down there. Like, we see it, but honestly, like, those people probably don't see it down there. So, I hope these divisions aren't 8 combo with. Please don't tell me they're 8 combo with. Okay, there's 16. I, I, can, I can deal with 16. Like, okay, never mind. This, what the hell is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this division before we actually invade with them, so. Uh, it's fine. We'll, and we'll invade probably next episode, too. Invader, yes. Please. Amphibious naval. Uh, that extra supply, I guess, is pretty nice to have. That's, I'll be honest, that's pretty good to have. Although, the Deutsche Reichskal. The integrated Reichskal that were once under the administration of Niederland, Reichskal, sorry, Niederland and the Dutch nation before that will have to be quietly alerted to the coming invasion that they will soon be a key part of for the plan to work. They will be responsible for helping to facilitate the transportation of thousands of men, tanks, and other vehicles. They must be prepared to receive the Heer as if it was a long expected guest. Roads must be repaired, civilians in border regions must be evacuated quickly, and supply depots must be established. We showed a great kindness to our Dutch kin by directly allowing them to enter into the Reichs proper, and it's only time that they repay the favor. Absolutely. What the heck type of divisions are these? Now, this is much better. This is what we've already established here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab... Uh, I kind of like your hospitals. Logistics might be really good, though. They like, like take like literally no supply. This would be really good, though. Um, fuel usage goes down, but I'm not worried about that at all. Just supply usage. I don't want them to starve anywhere. They shouldn't starve anywhere. So, yeah. Get them signal companies. I don't want them to be just... Just awesome. Just... Do we actually get... 40 combo with Marines? I would love to have 40 combo with Marines. Get some more arty on these guys. Yes, we can. Nice. Well, technically no one's using them yet, but... Um, C Battalion, yes, please. Two columns, huh? Half you guys go from here to invade... Actually, no, you know what? Go here to there. And you guys invade right next to them. Dunkirchen. 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 Very nice. Yeah, hopefully they do okay here. Everyone else train if you need to. Like, seriously, train if you need to. You guys need to train, but we'll get there eventually. Mountaineers in the Alps. Hello, the Dutch Reichsgal. Followed up with Panzers and Calais. For a spear thrust to work, there must be a sufficiently deadly spear tip. To follow the analogy, if our mechanized and armored forces will be the uh, spear thrust of the upcoming Burgundy invasion, we'll need to establish a vanguard force to strike quickly and decisively to open up a line of advance. After the normal bickering about who would have the honor of leading the charge against the traitor state, General Field Marshal Schwerner, luckily tired of the arguments, proposed a solution that was agreeable to all. An ad hoc Kampfgruppe of core size would be derived from the units of several other formations who would use its less formal structure to better make split second decisions in that field. This proposal was generally well taken, and Schwerner drew up the Orders for the cre creation of the Coles Group of Kurs right then and there. Our armored and mechanized divisions will race through the Netherlands and into Belgium into the northern France. And kick down the door. The Orders may be at first, uh, first glance appear to be a formidable foe to defeat. Going by military power alone, this thought uh, may hold some weight, but it must always be remembered that defeating the enemy military is but one part of defeating a foe. The enemy nation itself must be destroyed before a true victory can be achieved. So while we will absolutely have to do our darndest against the SS legions, our generals predict that destroying Burgundy as a state will prove far easier. The madness that permeates its very soul makes it incredibly fragile to outside pressure, and has only survived this long due to the fear of other nations. We only need to break the door on the door, and the whole rotten structure will come crashing down. Um, what... And I will do this one too. What we will be marching into is no ordinary nation, filled with enemies, sure, but people, shops, all the things that make a nation. What are we supposed to do, or what we're about to do to enter into can only be matched in its monstrosity by the Christian depiction of Halleck. It is a place of pain and eternal torment, where the darn wish for death, but always find it just out of reach until the SS masters find their usefulness as it at is at an end, or they expire from the stress. Even those hardened of men still have a conscience that can keep them awake in the dead of night, but these SS dogs have abandoned even that much of their humanity, and do not deserve the titles Aryan, German, or even human. They are detritus of this world, and shall be treated accordingly. But if you enjoyed this very long video, and you're still watching, thank you, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, when we will invade Burgundy and probably die trying. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.